Yeah, because then I have the breakdown of that. Um, are we talking spoilers? Yeah, we might as well. We're doing spoilers, eh? Okay. All right, all right. Just make a huge, bold, capital letters, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Yeah, I'm already recording, by the way. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I wasn't as tired as I thought it was going to be. I would probably seven for something. I didn't make it look long. I woke up a little bit. because she didn't hear me when I came in yesterday. So I was like sneaking around the house. I get my socks on until like three in the morning. It's like <laughs> we have lino so you can hear it. So you have to be very careful in those cases. What is up, everybody? Happy Endgame weekend. Uh, thanks for joining us on the F Word. There's actually going to be two episodes dropping this week. So this is going to be our regular scheduled Saturday episode or whatever. Um and then I'm going to be recording a full-blown spoiler breakdown, much like our Infinity War last one, our, our Infinity War one we did last year. So if you want to roll back and go back into our catalog and look for that, listen to that first. I'll have the same guy on there, Jimmy Cunos, and we'll be talking uh, Endgame, probably breaking it down as much as I can because he's going to be watching it. By the time we record, he'll have watched it twice. Oh. Uh, he's going tomorrow because it's Friday right now. Uh, I'm G, and with me is... V. Anthony. And Anthony. Anthony is triggered. Yeah, I always going to do big facts, but you know what? You guys don't deserve big facts this week. <laughs> well, the thing is, in this in this point, like, you're not in the wrong in any of this because I've seen so many. First of all, there's Instagram accounts that are posting legit mm-hmm. video spoilers that yeah, have leaked. I saw that. Yeah. You're giving, what, two slides or three? Uh, Well, two, and I gave a five-second countdown, and some guy said, he literally, yeah, I watched the countdown. <laughs> And then I read the spoiler fact. I'm like, what else do you want from me? Yeah. yeah. What else? What else can I do? Well, and, and that's the kind of the shitty thing because you're at a weird spot where you have to put something out to continue obviously growing the the, the page. But then everyone's going to shit on you mm-hmm. regardless of what you do. In this case, you're definitely not even close to being in the wrong because you're giving yeah. ample room. And then there were spoilers without context. Yeah. That, that one was hilarious. And they weren't like, there were no major plot points. Nothing. No one's going to piece it together then, in no. any way. And then, yeah, I get people shitting on me too. And I said, why would you, you saw it. You saw two slides plus spoilers yeah. Yeah. without context. Why would you keep swiping through them all? For sure. Yeah. But there was enough people on your feed there that were more than happy to discuss it, said their points, mm-hmm. everyone was respectful about it, and would care on your day. Just don't read it if you haven't seen anything. Yeah, and like then people this. are reading the spoiler thread where I have a post specifically for spoilers, so people don't go on my other posts and, you know, like, yep. talk about it. And yeah. it's done, like, pretty good. Like, I've been monitoring it, and nobody's really done that. And the people, well, why would you post this? I'm mm-hmm. like, why the fuck are you reading it? Yeah. If you're a true fan, you would have seen it last night. <laughs> yeah, you're somebody yeah, called, somebody said, I have no pity for them. If they were a true fan, they would have seen it day one. Yeah. Exactly. And I just said, I, I agree. I'm leaving it up. Well, to be fair, I tried going today before recording this, yeah, and yeah. it was packed. Like, there oh, wasn't yeah. a, a, no a seat available. So I got my tickets for Monday at 6.30. You're going Sunday? I'm going Sunday at 11 Are again. you going another time this weekend? Maybe, like, sometime this week. I'll see if, like, people who haven't seen it want to go. But yeah. I'll probably see it again sometime. Okay. Soon. This um, one might actually be one I might go by myself to see again. Okay, I know when you ask me in the chat and you're like, you're going solo. Yeah. Do you guys go to solo? Like, have you ever never. been to a movie by yourself? No. Never. I did it for Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did it for a movie called Mother. Mm-hmm. I did it for A Quiet Place, uh, which is a little more fitting for A Quiet Place. You know, secluded, felt warm. Um, I forget which other movies. It's it's a great way to go to a movie sometimes. Yeah. Not all the time, I- but if you've got it, if you've got the time, you got nothing to do, yeah. try it. I typically like the after movie banter and Nick, you can just bounce off ideas 100%. like, oh, we can talk about this. And if you're sharing a ride to even better. But mm-hmm. that's why I like to go with movies with friends or a larger group. You get like everyone's little comments in there. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where I like to go with the group. I've never had the need or want to go by myself. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But this might be one because I want to see it that much again yep. and again. Mm-hmm. I'll probably arrange to go by myself whenever I feel like going. It was funny though. Like I haven't gone by myself, but like even just watching with that atmosphere, like Thano beside us, like just his laugh. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Even yeah we got because... a friend of ours that has like, he laughs from the belly. Like it's a cauldron bubbling and you can oh, hear yeah. it. Everywhere. I remember there, I don't know what, I forgot what it was. But it was this one scene and it wasn't really that funny and it was all quiet in the theater. You just hear him. Ha ha ha. Yeah. I definitely, oh, yeah. I, I like 
Well, obviously I can hear him because we're in the same row. But um, yeah, I, I like going to movies by myself. Not all the time. Yeah. Uh, for that reason that you said it's awesome. But, you know, if it's more of a smaller movie, like I said, like A Quiet Place or a, like A Mother or yeah. something like that. I mean, Deadpool was obviously bigger, but I had the day off and I was like, should just fucking go and try it out. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a great theater experience because everyone was laughing in the theater. Like, I, I haven't been to a movie in a while where, like, yeah. every single person is just enjoying themselves. Yeah. Um, I've been where only I'm enjoying myself and my friend. Like, actually, it was Pirates of the Caribbean 3 well, with a group of us. and Didn't only care for that one. A lot of people didn't, but there was enough, like, small stuff that me and my buddy just found completely hilarious. We were the only ones laughing at those moments, it seemed like, but eh, I had fun. The music in that one was outstanding. I feel that, aside from the first Pirates and parts of the second, Mm -hmm. the music saved the third for me because that soundtrack is wonderful. Are you listening to us through headphones, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, if it sounds off... Uh, I apologize. I've got my wife's laptop, which is much newer than my other one, which kind of makes me feel like an idiot because I've been bitching about my other laptop. Um, I've done a couple test runs. It seems to sound better and I can jack up the volume so I don't have to mess around too much in post. And because, you know, I've always had an issue with the way our sound sounds. So I've got the headphones just kind of monitoring how things are going a lot better. Plus, we're in a close area. Yeah. Okay. Um, Are we going to be talking endgame spoilers? Yes. Yes. Okay. So. If you have not seen Endgame, we're gonna le- we're gonna save it closer towards the end because we're gonna also gonna talk Game of Thrones the last episode and kind of run through that. And at the request of my co-hosts, I have last time when we watched the episode on sun on Sunday, I put everything in order. So we're gonna be going in order, gentlemen. Um, Endgame, not so much. Yeah. No, but we're we're gonna go talk spoilers. So. I don't. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna give a lot of warning before we get to the end game part. You can uh, give as much warning spoilers. as you like. It doesn't matter. People yeah, are just gonna. You know, I blow guess past so. It. So just know that this episode, at the end of it, and I'll I'll say we're starting end game now. Spoilers, blah blah blah, because we're gonna talk Game of Thrones right now. Because really, that's the only thing. I I didn't see anything else this week that really mattered too not, too much. Not on that scale. Yeah. When you have end game and Game of Thrones, it's exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Just, just a fair warning. There is going to be some spoilers, but we're going to be. Um, it's, it's going to be just kind of some throw-in things here and there. And again, I'll be having a full, full, full breakdown spoiler for people who've seen it, which you probably have. Okay, let's talk Game of Thrones. Did you guys like the episode? It was like a setup episode. Yeah. Like I didn't think it was anything yep. special, which we knew. Like it wasn't. I wasn't like you know expecting anything big. Yeah, I expected that too. Um, I was was surprised that it was mainly all in Winterfell. I, for sure. I kind of thought they might have done one clip. But it does make sense exactly why they stayed in one setting in Winterfell and went through those different pieces of all these different groups of people and like basically their final night and what's potentially could be their final night. That's super important. That, yeah. that That's the part that I think makes the episode mm-hmm. so much better. Um, I got a Lord of the Rings vibe this episode. A little bit. Too. Helm's Deep? No. Uh, well, uh, I think Helm's Deep is going to be next episode. For sure. Um, but when we get to that point, I'll, I'll oh. break it down. So okay. the opening credits, you noticed it more this time, right? Yes. Okay. So the the tiles that had flipped to last hearth are yep. now totally flipped because they've yep. taken over. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty cool. Did we get more in Winterfell in those opening credits? Because I feel like we did. And I thought if, it was weird that they showed Didn't you King's say the landing. defenses were up and all that crap? This I think time? some of the defenses, yeah, they showed the, the trenches around okay. and all that kind of stuff. So they did, did a little bit more in depth. And um, so that's what I noticed in the trailers for sure in that opening scene. But uh, other than that, I think the rest of it going forward with, with King's Landing and stuff was pretty much the same. I don't think much changed with that. I it, don't even know like how it's yeah. supposed to look beforehand. So, <laughs> well, it, it's a, it, it essentially was the exact same thing. Um, mind you, because you didn't notice it too much on the first episode, from the top down of things just rising to yeah. actually flowing through is like a wholly different experience. Yeah. Um, the, I thought it was weird that they showed King's Landing because it wasn't like because it, it felt like those opening credits yeah. were going to be different and going to be and just going to show us what's going to be in that specific episode. Yeah. yeah. But it probably so, wouldn't have been enough for the entire song. What are we going to do? Like circle all around yeah. Winterfell? Like, oh, here's the bathrooms. Take a look yeah. at the windows. We've no upgraded kidding. the tower. <laughs> yeah, I, that's true. I guess they just kept that in for just there. We're going to put yeah. King's Landing in there too, but focus a decent amount on Winterfell, I guess. Um, I think we all called it. It starts with Jamie on trial. 
Yeah, is I that what... I kind of thought it potentially could have ended or started exactly how the last episode ended with Bran and uh, Jamie having that Just interaction of, and potentially or, right. a conversation of okay. something there. But the trial was definitely one you guys called, I think, on that one. We also said so, no one's going to die. I th- I thought so, too, because I, I knew it was going to be a setup episode. It had to. Just with the way you saw the last one that ended, uh, they released the time slot for episode three being an extra 22 minutes. Okay, well, obviously, this is going to be the battle then. Yeah. And it was always kind of rumored to be so when you think about for sure. how it's supposed to end, right? And it's it's the biggest battle in both movie and TV history. Cinema history. And from what I understand, the like there's a they're, they're, they're actually, when Game of Thrones airs, they're going to take away a screening from Endgame to screen this in theaters somewhere. Wow. Yeah, like that's how big of a deal that this next episode is going to be and how yeah. huge it is yeah. that they're actually going to take a slot away or not screen Endgame during that time, mm-hmm. which I think is, it's interesting. Well, it's going to be a couple of weeks down the line, so I guess mm-hmm. Endgame won't be as big as it, like it's still going to be a big film, but it's like this taking Sunday, one though. Oh, they're doing it for this Sunday. Tomorrow, well, I guess oh. technically it'd be Select two days. I think for the finale kind of thing. Oh. It's, it's going to be insert. I think it's like an Academy Theater or some, one. I think maybe yeah. the Chinese Theater. Maybe Possibly. that's the one yeah. um, that they're going to do it. But they've already had the premiere for the movie. It's opening so and it's also everywhere like a, else around the, the world. Showtime throughout the whole day. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I got to say, I was a little disappointed how quickly that trial was mm-hmm. for a character that's done so much in the show. I felt like Danny was, she's like, I heard stories. The whole thing yeah. we saw in the trailers, that was dope. Being Danny. Um, <laughs> I, I just thought more people would have piped up maybe and then really had a trial. Like Tyrion's trial was great. Mm-hmm. Cersei had an incredibly, um, both heartbreaking, weirdly, mm-hmm. even though we kind of hate her. But yeah. that whole shame thing, yeah. that was her trial. Yeah. Um, and then Jamie kind of had one, but it was relatively quick. Um, did that bother you guys? Well, to be fair, they're like preparing for war. So mm-hmm. if like they're all on the same page, we're like, like, cause John's kind of like, you know, like forgive him. Like, let's get ready for war. We need him. Yeah. Like yeah. we, we like, need anybody we can get. They yeah. can't really spend too much time dwelling on it. They kind of yeah. got to forgive. And then after the war, they can go back to it. If they really need to, if yeah. they feel a need to, but it felt, that point it, happens, it felt yeah. less of a Jamie trial and more of a Daenerys trying to once again, establish her dominance and then getting, vetoed by Sansa after Brienne, which I thought was awesome. I, yeah. And I, I was, I don't remember if I mentioned it last episode, but I was like, I feel like Brienne's going to be the one to be like, I vouch for him. I think so too. There would have been an opportunity in some way, shape or form. And they did it perfectly, right? There's no yeah. other way you could portray it and how it came about. Cause like even Sansa was on Danny's side, right? Daenerys' side. So up, yeah. Uh, up until that point yeah. in, in the, in the terms of like what he did. And yeah. We don't know. Like, no, he, no one said anything about Bran going out the window, which I thought was funny because Bran still said the things I do for love. Yeah. Just like for Littlefinger when he said chaos is a ladder. Is that what the line was? Chaos is a ladder. So yeah. He doesn't care, which we'll find out shortly after. Um, But he still met. He still wanted to throw that jab out for sure, which I thought was really funny. And but then John like, pretty much being like, yeah, we need all the hands we can get. And yeah. then just even one more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All the half hands we can get. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then Daenerys just sitting there like, oh, that's it then. This guy that killed my dad. But I think because she knows that her dad was a like a bastard. Like yeah. he was a really shitty person. Well, exactly it, right? And like Jamie defended himself perfectly. Like, I'm not going to apologize for that shit. That's exactly what I needed to do. And yep. I would do it again. Yep. And that's basically it. And that's who Jamie is. And you respect him at the end of the day. He's had the most complete changing arc from the beginning, even more than Theon. Theon kind of had his, I think between Jamie and Theon, they had the biggest arc in how their characters changed. And you went from hating them to yeah. liking them again and back and forth, whatever. Theon's kind of still in a gray area, but still, there you kind of Because Theon joy. actually burned kids. Exactly. Yeah, gray joy. Gray well, joy. and gray area. J- Jamie, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the gray area joys. Yeah. Uh, Jamie lost a hand and Theon lost his dick. And that's kind of what, yeah. <laughs> what happened. And those things go together. Oh, yes, yeah. it's true. Yeah, but Jamie go. can still use his other hand. <laughs> Theon can't. He's just grasping it. <laughs> not, not even straws. <laughs> to go stick. Air. Uh, feel it. But yeah. yeah. And and like you said, he, he had a great response to it. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, Danny's just sitting there while John's like, after hearing what happened, mm-hmm. right? He's like, uh, yeah, we need all the hands we can get. Gets up. Doesn't even look at her. Yep. And I don't know if it's like because he's trying to figure out how to tell her or because he's like, I had sex with my aunt. 
More, definitely the figuring out how to tell her, but this, the, I feel like the sex with the Anne things like kind of like brushed outside. Yeah, I don't think it really matters. For us, in it's the world, weird. For us, it's weird, there but in the in the yeah. world of Game of Thrones, like that's the least worry. Like John's worried about honor and how to tell, how to break this to her. And then obviously as we reveal later what happens with that on Danny's side, it's just yeah. completely different again. So, yeah, but uh, Tyrion, yeah, Jan looked like an idiot. And Danny had a great response. Yeah. Like, this is your brother. Like, you trusted your sister or whatever. Like, and she's looking at him like, this is kind of your fifth strike. Rightfully yeah. so. Mm-hmm. And she, and because Tyrion vouches for his brother, right? Yeah. But his word means nothing to her anymore. Yeah. And I don't disagree with her. Because that's also right away after that, they have a little interaction in the back, kind of like on, outside of that courthouse area. Yeah, where I said Tyrion is no longer hand. Yeah, yeah, basically like they're discussing potentially someone else wearing it. And Tyrion even said it to, to Davos and Ser Jorah. To, like, yeah, to Batman. To Batman. Is he actually Batman? Yeah. Is that in the con- confirmed? In the, uh, like, yeah, for Titans. Anime. Oh, for ta- Titans. Or animated. No. In the- for live action Titans. Oh, really? On Netflix. Look down. Season oh, two. Okay. Oh. I thought for a second it was the Matt Reeves Batman. And I was like, oh, no. that's an interesting choice. Yeah, no. TV. That'll be in- good. That's still an interesting choice. Very skinny Batman. Yep. More Michael Keaton than uh, Batfleck. That's true. But yeah, the, them having their interaction was pretty good. Yeah. And. Um, when I was writing this, I should have put more notes on this. So Tyrion no longer the hand, but he kind of it was just th- it, it, he get he accepts it. Yeah. He's he's kind of like I I've made these mistakes. He yeah. gets it, and he, he's not stupid. Oh, exactly. Like even though he is stupid, he's actually not stupid. He's just uh, he mentions it. I don't <laughs> remember if he mentions it then, but he mentions it later where he's like, I've made common mistakes mm-hmm. where I've underestimated my enemies or I've underestimated yeah. people like. This is talking about a man who doesn't drink anymore, or does drink, who knows, and doesn't read like he used to, yeah. or know things. Uh, but he did tell John that, you know, he's short and he's whatever, you wear it like a badge, so it's yeah. your armor. So he still wears his mistakes Always. as his armor, so at least he's the most self-aware, he's almost the most self-aware person right now. Absolutely. Well, I think so, because he like actually took responsibility, he's not like mm-hmm. denying it, he like said, yeah, like I fucked up. Yeah. Which even for like character arcs, like back in season one, where he's kind of just like the kind of smart, arrogant guy who'd kind of just go about doing his things. Mm-hmm. For sure. Well, even Nick said he's like, I didn't like him. Is he watching it too? Like, is he up to yeah. date? Okay. Yeah, he is. Um, so that was a thing. Okay, Arya and Gendry about the whites. So he asked if I'm, she if he made the his, her his, her pole arm or whatever. Yeah. Um, and they have a pretty decent conversation about the whites. Yeah. Um, because he's fought one. Yeah. But she's pulling that death has many faces thing. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. That was definitely a great interaction. Like it, obviously they're playing off each other very well. There's that tension between them, and it sets up what's going to happen. Exactly, but she's trying to find out everything she can about these things, and fair enough, right? Like, what? How do they move? How do this? Like everything about them, and you know, Gendry doesn't really know how to best explain them. It's like it's just terrible. Yeah, they, they, they I don't know. This is how they are. Like this is yeah. how we fought them. Like this, whatever. And she does that badass thing with the daggers. I thought that yeah. was really cool. Oh yeah, and he's got the whole thing ready to go. Um, like the. He's pretty close to having every all the weapons ready. Mm-hmm. Well, he's like, he got all those those. I think all those were uh, basically spear tips, yes. more or less. Okay, so, so it's like spear less tips. daggers and more spear tips. Well, and Sully, okay. their main their main uh, weapon is the right. spear, right? So right. they would definitely need more spear tips like that. Um, so that's what she was just throwing at the wall, right, and showing her skill and showing more of what she is, kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah. Anthony, I just thought Arya was badass. She's now Nightwing. She has the fucking batons going on too. Like she's just uh, turning into a fucking DC what, character. She is <laughs> um, then we move on to one that I was super excited to see finally, which we thought was going to open the yep. Jamie and Bran under the Weirwood. Yep, that was awesome and perfect. Pretty telling. But you made a good point. Who the fuck wheels him out there? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like. I think when we were watching, I was like, maybe he wargs himself yeah. into the chair and he wheels himself like he wheels inanimate the chair. objects. Yeah, he, he somehow has been able to to make His that eyes thing are move. in the spoke. Or yeah. The eye, the... <laughs> or does he get someone to wheel him out there and then he just, he's like, okay, see you later. He just there's, sits there. Yeah. You know what? Out of all the theories in all of Game of Thrones, that's my the most confusing one. Yeah. Because in the first episode, it just seemed like he just sat in that one spot, and that's great. Yeah. But who wheeled him over to there? I just assume someone's. You're you're on brand duty. You got. I don't want to go near him. Just please wheel him wherever Come he wants. Every three hours. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a Cinderella thing, and yeah. he works himself into other ravens 
that then collectively come and push his chair, yeah. like when Cinderella's uh, dresses are dress like and the, the bed is made. Yeah, I think that would be quite nice. <laughs> that That'd would be, be pretty hilarious. Sweet. I what, thought what if he's faking it. He just stands up and walks <laughs> over there, picks it up, <laughs> rolls over his shoulder when no one's looking, puts it back down. That's why he's freaking everybody else. So they don't look at him. So he yeah. just fucking stands up, wheels it over it's there, like, sits down. Um, I actually got my legs back in season two. Um, <laughs> I just really like being carried around. My back just really hurt. Had yeah. a couple Advils. Fine the next and morning. And now I have extreme atrophy, and I just I just can't go back. <laughs> His legs are just numb. It's like sitting on the toilet for too long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can't stand up. Um, <laughs> but he tells him. So Jamie asks the obvious question: Why mm-hmm. didn't you tell him? Yeah. And he obviously asks why he, if he's mad or anything like that, and he does the whole I not I don't not mad I don't anything. Yeah. Like, I'm the three eyed raven. Yeah. Whatever that is. <laughs> um. And again, it's still funny because he threw out that comment. Yeah. Right? But he made a really important point. If you didn't do that, you wouldn't have become the man that you are today if you didn't do that. Exactly. And, and I wouldn't become the Three-Eyed Raven. I would just be Brandon Stark. Right. Uh, and he says, we need you in the battle. So I think he's seen a little bit. Pulling on a Doctor Strange. Yeah, pulling mm-hmm. on a Doctor Strange. He's seen a little bit. He's like, we need this guy. Well, it so, seems like he's Doctor Stranging all over the place. Mm-hmm. Like he's 100%. doing his like one yeah. in 14 million or whatever it is. Yeah. Just really slow and with more staring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really weird staring. Exactly. Okay. But, yeah. Um. Do you think that means that he is, which we'll, we'll get to even more so because my theory right off the bat based on that conversation and what happens later, which we'll talk about, is that Jamie is done next episode. I could see or it. Or in an episode and a half kind of thing, right? Yeah. Like, um, because of that, they do need him or... It's the exact opposite. Because they need him, he's going to be even more important and maybe be pivotal at everything and all sorts of things, right? Yeah. Like Doctor Strange in it once again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, So they did that under the tree. I have another note. Anything else on that? No, nope, that's no? pretty much, yeah. Do you remember much of that? Ep- did you watch it again? Uh, I've watched it once again, yeah. Okay, good, because yeah. you're probably going to be more caught up. Like, I saw a bunch of people talking about it throughout yeah. the week. Um, Jamie and Tyrion. The baby is real now. So Jamie's like, that part isn't real. I don't or, think sorry, he knows. That is true. That's what I'm not sure I, of. I still think he's being duped nonetheless. I don't think there's a baby at all. You see her drinking wine, whatever. It could have been a whole ploy from the very beginning. Well, to that to, to that point, everyone's mentioned the wine thing. I'm like, it's too back much. then. Yeah, they yeah. didn't know. No one would have known. Yeah. I'm watching Mad Men right now, and the pregnant women are smoking, and the doctors are smoking in the that's doctor's true. offices. Like, that's fair. They didn't know. Yeah. Right. Uh, so they clearly wouldn't have known that wine does yeah. anything to kids back then. Yeah. So that's where now him saying that, like, I never subscribed to the wine part of it. I just subscribed to her manipulating. But then he says she's always used the truth to tell her lies as well. Well, how did she act when he when the guy said, like, she acted weirdly. Like, how did she act when that one guy in the first episode said, I want to put a prince in your belly? Oh, uh, you're on. Like, she kind of cringed, didn't she? Or like, well, she kind of had kind of. too. Yeah. So okay. when having a smirk, like when I lie, I know whenever someone like calls you on a lie, like I smirk. Yeah. yeah. So if I already have a baby in my belly, like I'd smirk too, just because it's kind of like one of those things where that's just my tell. Like that's my tell. I just yeah. smile for mm-hmm. some reason. But it works with the context kind of mm-hmm. thing too, because she could smirk and at, like smirk at his comment and just say, yeah. okay, yeah, whatever. I thought she cringed, but I also thought someone had pointed out, I forget which podcast it was I was listening to, um, that maybe the, the baby is real mm-hmm. and she's going to use that baby because he says I'm going to put a prince in there. Yeah. She's going to make Euron think that that's his baby. Yeah. And then control him through there, which I don't know if that matters and I don't know if we have time to make that happen. Yeah. But that's a long con. It is, it's right? Nine months and, in the making. Yeah. Exactly. So now I'm more on the side that, okay, sure, maybe the baby does exist and she's just waiting to manipulate one or the other. Mm-hmm. If it comes down to, let's say, Jamie surviving, going back to King's Landing to kill her. Much like the prophecy said, because the prophecy never said anything about another child. And I don't know if that matters. It it talked about her death. Yeah. She'd have three kids. They'd all die. And then the youngest brother will kill her. Yeah. So m- that's where, because of that prophecy, I don't think that that baby exists. But at the same time, the show could be doing something else. Well, the baby could exist, but if it's not born, technically isn't like a child. That's a good point. That is a very good point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, depending on which... Which side you stand on that topic? Uh, they both look the same. Okay, this is the one point I made. Episode one, they were both clean shaven and had super golden hair. Yeah. And then now, Jamie has long hair with a beard, and Tyrion has short hair. Like they're kind of like the, they, 
their their look is opposite. So Tyrion has the longer hair with mm-hmm. a beard. Uh, Jamie has sorry. Tyrion has long hair with a beard. Uh, Jamie has short hair with a beard. Whereas they had long and short hair, both clean shaven, and both clean shaven. I don't think I don't know if that's like that's probably nothing. Yeah. It's more I'm just looking at it from like oh that's pretty interesting. Yeah, and I think the guys just did that as just showing their kind of transformations mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah, and Something small. And the last time they were in Winterfell was like Tyrion was in the whorehouses and kind of yeah. whatever. Even though the the Northerners were still spitting on them from the thing, um, and Jamie was walking mm. in, you know, the Golden Lion or whatever. Yeah, he's definitely humbled himself now. Obviously, he doesn't strut around as much as he used to. Yeah, and uh, but it was good. It was a very good interaction with them and walking up he's like you knew exactly what she was but she loved her like with talking about cersei again kind of thing so mm-hmm. it's like you knew exactly what she was <laughs> it's just right and that's where kind of love is blind yeah. type of deal and he didn't obviously know the extent of it yeah um, because of his humanity actually coming through mm-hmm. w- through brienne now Tyrion does say to him maybe i'll just go and choke her myself or something like that yeah, yeah. but then he has already turned around and he's staring at brienne yeah and brienne's overlooking podrick and i put podrick is a boss yeah. Because Podrick can now fight. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and then Jamie pledges his allegiance to Brienne, mm-hmm. which those two during this whole episode were my favorite. Yeah. Dude, when are they going to bang? Pardon? When are they going to bang? See, this is the this is the thing that a lot of people are confused about. Does Jamie actually love her the way that Brienne loves him? Because I believe that she does Truly, have yeah. actual feelings for him. Mm-hmm. Um. But I and and I think Jamie does love her, mm-hmm. but not to that extent. I think he yeah. just like you know when you love somebody and you just respect the shit out of them, and they like she is the reason why Jamie is here. Yeah. In episode seven, when he brought in the white thing, she's like, "Fuck tradition, fuck lawyer, like fuck families and all that stuff." Yeah. Like this is bigger than that, and that's why he's here. And Jamie even said that in his trial, too. Exactly. It's, like, it's beyond that now. <laughs> it's beyond that. And Brienne was also, like, those two meeting each other were the reason, like, that. that's when his arc changed. Yeah. That's when he pledged allegiance to to um, save the Stark kids or whatever. Yeah, to Catelyn. Like, to yeah. Catelyn. Um, all, all of that started with Brienne, which is why there's so much love and respect for her mm-hmm. more than Anybody in the entire realm. I don't think anybody respects anybody in all of Westeros as Jamie does Brienne. That's that's sure. the love that I'm feeling. Where she might have the other feelings. She has the torment in Brienne feelings. Yeah. Not to that extent, of course. Yeah. I don't know. That's my thoughts. No, that makes sense. To the point where he's fighting under her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A person who, at this point in the in the episode, is not a knight. And he is a knight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a mad respect. And that's how you said, like, it's all about them <clears throat> this episode because... You know, as you know, the title is a knight of so, the of the seven kingdoms, yeah. which knight as in a knight in shining armor, not knight. Also, it's a book. It's a novella, they call them. So it's a smaller okay. book. Okay. After the Song of Ice and Fire, that's the title of it. Uh, and it talks about a king, uh, knight Duncan the Tall. Okay, yeah. Sir Duncan and, the Tall. So yeah, Don- it's one Duncan of the-, the Tall, who was someone mentioned in a video was mentioned in one of the first episodes when Bran was in the bed and the yeah. old lady was telling him stories. She was like, did I ever tell you the story about Duncan the Tall? Yeah. Who is a Targaryen uh, of, dis- of Targaryen descent and so, related yeah. to Brienne, which is why she's so tall. Mm. There you go. And, which will, this is kind of, I'm only going to jump on this that's point. Fine. The song that Podrick sings and at the end of the episode, that song about Jenny mm-hmm. is tied into Sir Duncan the Tall about Jenny of the Woods or something like that. Okay. So they obviously added some lyrics to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they definitely expanded. But it, that's they? that song ties into the Sir Duncan the Tall and yep. the Knight of the Seven Kingdom or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and it was about him, not obviously Brienne, but that's mm-hmm. their connection. Uh, Daenerys and Jorah, a conversation about forgiveness, mm-hmm. which is quite nice. Absolutely. And I think Jorah holds so much sway after being kicked off the island twice. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um. But do you think he's right? Absolutely, he is. Well, what again? I need to refresh on this. No, that's okay. Uh, for for forgiving Tyrion oh, because he she yeah. forgave ha- him for pretty much doing something worse. Yeah, like Jorah from the beginning was deceiving her, and he just kept going because he loved her and stuff like that. And he's like, you know, I was in those posi- I was in those positions too, and you found a way to forgive me. Maybe you should forgive him. And at the end of the day, Jorah technically would have been the hand of the queen had he not been away. So he's mm-hmm. like, oh, this guy basically took your job. 
But he's like, he's like, yeah, but he's still the right person for it. And that kind of says like, you got to trust him and there's a reason you pick them. Right. So remember that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And going further, he's like, if I can suggest one more thing, that's where he suggests you need to go talk to Sansa Stark. We don't see that conversation, mm-hmm. but that's where it breaks the next scene where she, Daenerys and Sansa have their conversation. But Jorah basically tells her, like, you got to change your act. It's like, it's like he still loves her. He still respects her. He's been through her since the very beginning and yep. stuff like that. So for him, she he knows how she is, but he too is going to check her in a different way. It's going to take him a little bit longer. Tyrion's like right in her face, obviously. But... Yeah. But Jorah will get to the point where, you know, she asked me, I'm going to give you the honest answer in the most respectful way possible. <laughs> well, and, and this is where I had the issue with the Daenerys character after um, the Marine. I think was it was a Marine. After she left basically Essos yeah, in general. I, I felt a good conqueror mm-hmm. does not a good ruler make. I'll put it that way. Yeah. She is a good conqueror. She mm-hmm. also has dragons that help, right? Yeah. But she's not a good ruler, and that's what's kind of showing. She, You can't just be like, those are the signs of your dad. Yeah. This is why he got killed and all that stuff. And right. so Jorah's kind of like, like he's trying to, to tailor her mm-hmm. to be a good leader, yeah. not just somebody that can go in and wreck shit everywhere. Well, and that's just the thing, too. Like, with her, she keeps going back to exactly how her dad was every single time. There's Maybe a, not to that extent, but not like, to that extent, even but, her brother. Yeah. Well, like, oh, look, she was ready. As soon as they got the dragon stone in season seven, yep. she's ready to burn Varys and, and hold him against everything he ever did. You meet uh, Jorah. Well, Jorah changes thing. But, like, every single opportunity she's met with potentially, like, not being that way, mm-hmm. she just goes for that first and then she gets checked by people yep. so she gets she likes to put herself like two steps forward and then she gets dragged five steps back well she she way. goes for the the kill first absolutely mm-hmm. and she's gotten away with it a couple of times which it's really hard not to however yeah. this is the episode that i actually like daenerys yeah a lot more than the previous episodes or season seven or whatever yeah and the reason is because daenerys got sold off to the dothraki true her brother was a dick that was a little Stockholm though. After a while, to... no, but but she she got <laughs> initially she yes. got sold off pretty much like so the, they can get the thing back. Her idea of the throne never kicked in until the dragons and there, there was a point where then she became throne hungry. Yeah, but before it was all survival, mm-hmm. and she was treated poorly. So last episode I was talking about how the the women are looking up here and the men are looking down here. Yeah. Well, in the first few seasons, the women were being treated like shit. Yeah. Terribly. And now they're all coming to prominence, right? Yeah. She saw, uh, what's his name? Her first husband. Cal Drogo. Cal Drogo. Die. Yeah. She had the baby, lost it, brought him back. He died again. So the whole thing was like a, 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 a shitty emotional situation, right? Um, and then she got betrayed when they stole her dragons when they were babies. Yeah. At that, what was that place called? Uh, the house of the undying. Yeah, or the dying. Or yeah, the undying. vision of the throne in winter was when that kicked in. So I think that plays a lot to what's going to go on. Yep. Um, I think that that ties into the idea of plot armor, like mm-hmm. armor for the character has just because the plot says so, <laughs> right? Yep. Um, or an ex machina type of thing. Well, ex machina is more like coming in and whatever. Mm-hmm. So all the things that have happened to her. I can see why she's become the conqueror. My issue is the fact that it's the same now. It's been the same for almost two seasons. Yeah. That's where my contention is, is that she evolved as a character, became an awesome character, and then now she's been the same for the longest time. And she plateaued. And it's not the actress's fault. I I personally don't think she's the greatest actress in the show, but it's also the way that they wrote her. Yeah. That's, they're just delivering lines that have been written. So I think like what you said, like made a lot of sense because- she starts getting treated like shit and rises to power like pretty quickly, I'd say. Yep. And I feel like the reason why she goes through her ways of just being like so violent and just like taking things she wants is because if you're a character who like goes from, or if you're a person, if you're a person that goes from having nothing and suddenly you have a lot of things, like those people just take and take and take. Just like sure. like Hitler, I want to use Hitler, he was just taking countries left and right and nobody opposed him. Yep. So in that sense, like if she's just taking and nobody's opposing her, 
Like, why would she change her ways? Well, and, and they were opposing. They were just losing for the longest time mm-hmm. until yeah. they finally. Like, and now, yeah, like this season, now people are opposing her, and she can't really just you know kill them because they're on the same fucking side. Well, exactly. And, yeah. and this ties into this one. So Sansa and Danny have a great com. I love yeah. this conversation. I love their interaction. I loved. This is where I could see how you like Danny because it showed a little bit more vulnerability with her well, less than the whole Congress. And thing. she made a great point that I didn't realize. Mm-hmm. She's like, who's using who here? Because I came here for John, even though she's talking about thrones and everything like that. Yeah. She's still sacrificing and bringing her army for John. Yeah. So when she said that, I was like, oh, my God. Like, that's when the flashback of everything that has happened to her. Like, and she says that, like, OK, this is an intelligent, complex character that has gray areas yeah. that is awesome yeah (coughs) excuse me so that's why i loved it so much Mm -hmm. and sansa from the school of cersei and littlefinger played this beautifully Mm -hmm. because once they got through their first conversation of you know i love john or he loves you and all that stuff which is what sansa was trying to figure out with john do you love her or you do like is it because you love her whatever then she brings out what about the north yeah and that was such a great back pocket ace in the hole mm-hmm. that she she had in that conversation. That's oh, yeah. like she it was so awesome how she did that. That's why she's one of my favorites. But anything more? No, I have nothing more. To add. No, no. Yeah, I like that. I, that whole interaction completely. Like how she started. Like I should have been thanking you from the beginning because, yeah, she's just grateful that she helped save her her brother. Sure. Brought yeah. the army to help them out. And but like you said, she brought that ace, and I was like, I'm still firm that this North is not going to bow to you, no matter well, what. They might, they might, anymore. they might change. Who knows? But even still, they're like, we've been screwed over so many times. Yeah. We're done with it. Yeah. Leave well, it. And, and because everyone's made the mistake of taking people at their word. Mm-hmm. Because if she was a lesser, like if she wasn't as intelligent, if that Cersei little finger side of her didn't come in, yeah, she probably would have left it at oh, okay, great. Mm-hmm. You're here for John. We're going to win, and everything's going to be great in her mind, right? Yeah, and and this is where I'm not sure where the show is going. Is the show telling us that they are going to like? I'm pretty sure they're going to survive. Like not everybody, obviously, but yeah. there's going to be an after battle. Of course, we have so many. We have we still I, have I a think few so. episodes. It's three of six. Three, three of, of six. six. Yeah. So, is that telling us that it's going to happen earlier, and we are going to have even more involvement with that idea of the throne and Danny versus everybody else? Like I know we're going to to an extent, but yeah. we still have King's Landing. We still have like. There is a, a lot of episodes left, but we still have. That means there's so many things that are happening. Yeah. Um, to to Be tie in quick. Yeah. Like so, is that stuff just going to happen? Like, boom. Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was awesome, idea. and and I love the reaction from Danny too. Like, the just from an acting perspective, not just leave, releasing her hand right away, but just the look on her face like and backing kinda, up. She's like, yeah. And then that's when she went back to conquer. Yeah. Right. Where Sansa's like, she's staring her down, and that. I was worried because we weren't going to see a lot of Cersei this episode, this season, mm-hmm. and I love the hell out of Cersei. Yeah, but we're getting it through Sansa. She's got the full ba- black battle armor outfit. It looks mm-hmm. like the same outfit she wore when she blew up the Sept. Uh, yeah. Like it's not bit. the same, but yeah, it's pretty close. Uh, any other points of that one? No, that was good. And then that leads us to Theon is back, mm-hmm. which is even more to not as a middle finger, but kind of to Daenerys because. Yeah. She originally thought that Yara and Theon were on her side and she had the Iron Islands Mm -hmm. and she didn't realize how deep these allegiances run with the and I loved this scene, not Mm -hmm. for that reason, of course, but Sansa's reaction to seeing Theon, Theon with his five or six guys or whatever. Yeah. And him pledging like him wanting to fight for Winterfell. Yeah. That whole thing was just like it was awesome. It was that awkward moment, like when someone's waving. At you, and you think you're waving, so you wave back, and there's mm-hmm. someone behind them that waves, and they're like, yeah, yeah, that's what <laughs> they're that actually waving to. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. and like the, the slide through, and which yeah. actually kind of happens later on, but yeah, yeah. Well, great. that's the thing. Like he, he, he gave his respect to Danny. He's like, yeah, my sister's going after the Iron Islands to win him back for you in your name. Which she was pissed though because she thought she was going to be the bring the exactly. He's like, but I yeah. brought this whoever I had and to fight for Winterfell and stuff like that, and he pledged himself to Lady Sansa. At the end of the day, but Sansa at this point, she Theon's as much of a, a family member as as she could have, right? Well, she it, sees him that way, right? So that's why she yeah. gets so emotional. Well, he saved her exactly. In the that's, end, he saved her. And he that's, saved her from Bolton, yeah. and that was if he didn't save her, 
yeah. they would have all lost because she would have gone to the Erie and all that. Like there's the, the, that chain of events that happened just like Brienne and Jamie's though. Yeah. Um, and but it, it's kind of like that. For me, I'm looking at. It, I'm like, damn, Sansa's got some like strong. Like people might bend the knee, let's say at Daenerys, but the level of respect that she's seeing that Sansa's getting from people yeah. is massive. And that's something that's something Danny hasn't clued in yet. The amount of respect that even John has earned a decent amount of respect. He's lost yeah. it a little bit now because of what he did and gave up his thing. But the deep seated loyalty with the Northerners has always been something that's been said. Like I. I read that uh, the Game of Thrones encyclopedia and stuff like that, or the fire, like the encyclopedia, encyclopedia. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things is about the Northerners and how deep their loyalties are. Like they, oh, yeah. and that's how it was, right? So yeah. this shows even more. Like they have these, and Danny doesn't get it yet because she's she came from another world. Not and again, conquer a hundred percent. She didn't like have to earn respect. She just. Forced, in. yeah. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. She forced she, she, respect, and yeah. that doesn't last very long. She forced respect on a few people, but that same token, the slaves that she freed, she freed? Yep. they give her respect because of what she did. So you got to give her credit for that, for sure. But she's now demanding respect out of these people who have seen, like, true heartbreak from conquerors, other Targaryens, and that kind of stuff. So it's like, it's going to take a little bit of time. Maybe you need to take a page out of Sansa's book. Get on her good side, which is why Jory even suggested in the there first place. Sorry, I was going to say talk closer to the microphone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then, yeah, so that's basically what it is with her, right? So, but yeah, yeah great. That was a great interaction. Um, then we have the battle room, the scene in the, the map fireplace. Room. Oh, oh no. Oh yes. Sorry, what you, you got? missed when Tormund and Ed came. Oh wait. Sorry, Tormund and the boys are back. Sorry, I kind of skipped. I, I almost skipped through that. Yeah. So when you said that you, that wave thing, that's got exactly physically what happened when uh, Ned shows up, like the guys show yeah. up. John goes to give him a hug, and then Tormund comes yeah, in yeah. and gives him a big hug. <laughs> Tormund was yeah. like, Tormund was really good comic relief in this one oh, for sure. Uh, there were times where it was a bit yeah. much, but I thought he was really good. That moment was really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, seeing everybody. Yeah. So they bypassed the whites. They yeah they're able to bypass the whites. They oh, yeah. clearly make it to Winterfell in time, and just enough like, hey, we're screwed. They're on their way yeah, right like away. Morning, because like realistically, they, they didn't they really morning? know. Sorry. I think it's at sunrise. Was before, it? yeah, basically okay. before a sunrise. Uh, Made a and, mistake on that one. And the thing is, like before then, how much time did they think they had? Yeah. They probably didn't have any idea. They're just like, okay, we're just preparing. We're preparing because you see nonstop what's going on around here, right? Yeah. Um. So that was a good, that was a very good meetup. Uh, um, was there the Davos scene later or before? No, Davos scene is later. after. Okay, I think. keep going. Yeah. Um, and then I'm them realizing all. we're already 42 minutes in. That's no, okay. okay. It's a long episode. Um, Night King's after Bran. So essentially, he's giving the plan that, like, he's after me, put mm-hmm. me in the Weirwood. Theon's like, I'll protect you. This is in the map room when they're planning everything. Yep. Um, he wants for an un. He wants an endless night to erase the world because he wants to erase the memories of humans. And mm-hmm. Bran is that memory. Yeah. Uh, the quote was forgetting or being forgotten. Yeah. Something along those lines. Um, Bran is bait and everyone is planning yeah. the war scene. And then John is cold to Daenerys. That's the three kind of notes I put there. Mm-hmm. Do you think, which I'm going to, um, I'll say this right now. Again, I guess this is my second jump. At the end of the episode, I heard no Night King and I heard no dragon. I no. just saw the sons of mm-hmm. Craster. Craster? Craster? Yeah, Craster's sons. So it's at this point that I'm like, much like Tyrion said that I underestimate my enemies because I think I know everything. I think this is Bran's, I think I know everything. And even though I do, he's mentioned the Night King has done this before mm-hmm. and he's done this many times before. Yeah. That's the equivalent of like, so in the context of time, Bran's been playing this game for five minutes and Night King's been playing it for years. Yeah. Right. So this is where I'm like, A, this isn't going to work the way that they think, mm-hmm. especially when the episode ended, because after I was like, there's no dragon. Yeah. Uh, and B, Bran may not know everything. It's true. And because of that, the Night King actually is controlling him more like sh- almost making him see what he what he thinks is going to happen. Yeah. Like. Kind of like Voldemort. Sure. <laughs> he makes Harry see what he wants because they share the mind. There you go. So, so that's a great one. I, I To be fair, I haven't seen the last. Uh, I only saw up the Goblet of Fire. 
of Harry okay. Potter. It's, it's on Netflix. That, watch literally, it. the episode after is when is that gets introduced okay. to the fact that they're connection and stuff. What did you guys think about that? And do I sound crazy? No, I think it makes a lot of sense because I feel it's going to be a turning point where they're kind of like have that false, like, false sense of hope yep. where they're like just beating the crap out of them. But then the dragon comes and then the Night mm-hmm. King comes because if you want to get it over with quickly, like you're not going to hold back with the fucking dragon. Like That'd be one of the first thing that goes in. And he likes making spectacular entrances. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. He likes his arms out in the air. He's like Loki. He wants a big sign with his name on yeah. it. That, Son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> he's a full course diva. He's what is a full blown diva. Yeah. A very mean one too. Absolutely. Yeah. I um, don't talk much. Yeah. <laughs> the, it was nice for Theon to say, I sacked your city. I want to, or your, let me protect your, it. whatever, let me protect it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I'm thinking this is going to backfire first of all, big time. Or it's yep. not going to happen at all. Yep. Um, any other thoughts on that in the map room? Well, they mentioned about uh, using the dragons to kill the Night Kings. Like, like yep. and Bran again, it's never been done. I don't know if it'll work. Mm-hmm. So there's that kind of thing, right? So no, I guess no one's had dragons <coughs> during the last long night when the Night King was around. So uh, yeah. this could be a game changer, but we all know he has his own dragon. And mm-hmm. they haven't really addressed that, which is surprising in their little boredom. Like, what if this freaking dragon comes about? What are we going to do? What do we have against it? He only mentioned it in the first episode when they showed up. Like, and that's it, a yeah. Dragon, the wall and they kind of passed over it, I think, a little too yeah. nonchalantly. Like, that would have been more of a shock. And it's like, someone should have mentioned it in that war room yeah. going on. Like, hey, what about this What are we going to do dragon? with the ice dragon? Yeah. yeah. Throw spears um, at it. Yeah, I guess. Well, dragon glass, yeah, maybe. Um, still bad. <laughs> don't kill it. Yeah, John is called to Danny. That's yeah. what we have. Tyrion Wendy. asks Bran about his story, which I thought was really cool. And I really, I would read the book. Well, not I would like I wouldn't read the book, but like it, I would want to go out. back and read the book for this part because I'm pretty sure it's there not was, out yet. No, I know it's not out. Oh, okay. I'm saying, but when, when it, it does comes, come oh, out, yeah. <laughs> the conversation between Bran and Tyrion I think would be really interesting. Well, because like Bran's like, oh, it's a long story. Well, you know, we're stuck in this. Uh, we, we got a go, long time. We got a long we time. Supposedly long, yeah. long. Yeah. <laughs> Um, do you think he finds out a lot of stuff about the battle? And that's why uh, in the few episodes later, or the few scenes later, he ends up drinking and seeming more positive. Like, do you think? No, Brand I think that's just him. him. I don't, who knows? I don't think so. But uh, it could. Just, that's just Tyrion being Tyrion now, knowing the inevitability of this potential battle and what it can mean and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So he's like, yeah, Anthony. I have nothing else to add. Uh, Masande no, and Grey Worm pretty much confirming that both of them, probably Grey Worm, is going to die. One, I think Sande. one of them will for sure. Yeah. And it's obviously Grey Worm because he's the more. But we can talk about our theory later, but it could be either one of them, to yeah. be honest. Um, but Grey Worm being in the battlement, of course, he's, he's more first like. But they're talking about like a life past this when she gets Iron, when Daenerys gets Iron Throne. It's like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I love my queen and stuff like that, but I make promises to you too, kind of thing. It's. You know, let's make a life together. Where would you want to go? Would you want to grow old in this place and die? It's like, well, she'd like to see her hometown, North, again. So mm-hmm. that's potentially something. Two things I never mentioned. One, Grey Worm giving the sword back to Jamie begrudgingly, the look he gave him. Yeah. All the daggers. And two, we talked about this this week, uh, obviously off uh, mic. Yeah. Ice is back together. In a way, yes. Yeah. Now so, that uh, Rob Stark's sword that Tywin Lannister melted into two swords, yeah. one was given to Brienne, Oath Keeper. Yep. And the other one was um, Widow's Whale. Widow's Whale or something. I'm not sure if it was renamed anything. <laughs> but now they're both in Winterfell. Yeah. Which I thought was pretty interesting. It just reminded me of Grey Worm giving the sword and then sword to Brienne. Like, so, uh, yeah, Ice being back was pretty cool, mm-hmm. I guess, in that respect. Yep. Um, the Night's Watch boys are together. They mm-hmm. have their little moment. Yes. Um, and Ghost is literally Just in the corner. In the background. <laughs> no one pays him any still, money. Still shitty how they're like, I get it. It's expensive. <laughs> but like, come on. By now, I, I got to imagine there was enough budget for them to like, let's put Ghost, have him a little prominent. Let, let have, I want, I wanted to see like Danny meet Ghost. Like you met my dragon. You met like Danny, you met my dragon. to John, John here. This is my dire wolf. Yeah, but I don't think that Danny not could ride the dire wolf. No, well. it's not. I mean, it's point. big, but. Yeah, but this he's had this thing since a pup. Obviously, it means sure. a lot to John, but he's been nowhere. So it's kind of it's kind of sad. They're just and brushing everywhere. 
Yeah, probably. Well, he's a ghost. He's, but he's a ghost. Uh, yeah, those the the last of the originals kind of thing yeah. sticking around. They lost their buddy Gren and Pip, so it's like yeah, it's just us. And then Sam affirming his like who I am and what I've done kind of thing. Which I forgot. I yeah, like, you know what? And then Ed's kind of like Sam. busting his balls. It's like yeah, if if that's what we have to like, you're the best we have. Like we're all fucked. <laughs> Which means he's dead because he also he's the one that mentions like make sure we burn like. Yeah, last one of us burned the body. Yeah, kind of stuff. Burned the rest of us. So, uh, but it was cool. Like there, it was a their, great interaction. Their watch begins after John yeah. essentially gave up his watch, which everyone was pissed. They're not everyone was pissed, but I, I forgot that he's like my watch has ended. That was by far one of my favorite scenes with him. Like he yeah. had to kill those guys, but not just that. He did die. Yeah. So he mm-hmm. pledged his oath until his dying breath. But Ed's like for all the nights to come. The fact that you came back, well, that's too bad on you. You got more to give. Someone's got to go over that contract again. It's probably on the side of the werewolf. Well, it's not written down. It's just spoken words. They just said it. Yeah. But he died. So, I mean, I don't know, man. Um, Anthony, anything to that? Let's watch, boys. I have nothing else to add at the end. Yeah. No, it was really cool. Okay. This is a big one. Um, The fire. Tyrion and Jamie, Brienne, Podrick Davos, Tormund drinking the biggest thing of giant's milk giving us the story of how he became how he's so got big his, how he got his name how he giant's got his name, name and um, why he's so strong not yeah. big but strong yeah uh this was awesome i really liked all this whole part in here was great yep i might have actually missed did you miss the aya thing already or is that later hold on hold on the sir davos thing you okay. missed sir davos. i might have served i might have missed the sir davos and shireen yeah uh reunion that was pretty early on I think so. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's get to that then. Um, that was pretty cool because Shireen taught Gilly how to read. Yes. So that was big for her. And then yeah. Davos seeing her, obviously, huge I connection. I kind of forgot that Shireen and Gilly, and Gilly had a little bit of an interaction. So, so did I. That, that, I was like, it kind of felt weird that Gilly came out of nowhere. But yeah. it made sense now that I, now that you say that, that she had that interaction. It's like, this girl reminds me of like Shireen. He's like, she looked like that. Was like, Does this look like something we know? Kind yeah. of thing. So... But it was a very good interaction. Davos, obviously, like you could tell, he's heartbroken. That he was, was like beautiful. That, the way he acted. That yeah. was crazy good. But he's like pumping this was her the up. Soup scene, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's like we uh, need you in there to help to be strong for everybody in the crypts, kind yeah. of thing, for all the women and children, kind of thing. So they're all in there. They're all talking about stuff. Mm-hmm. Tormund being his funny old self or whatever. Yeah, and we, um, it, it's a really nice kind of moment, which is super sad because most of them are dead. Like when I'm looking at that. Yeah. Um, because of that scene, Tormund is probably gone. I'm putting money on Davos dying. Mm. I'm putting money on Podrick maybe dying as well. Um, and then out of the other three, I'll like I'm not sure yet. Yeah, that was a tough one. Yeah. But yeah, no, like Tyrion reminiscing about all the battles they've been. Like we've all survived, and that's why he's like, oh, we could we could still win. Yeah, kind of thing. And he's like, positive, and that's he's why positive, I'm like, yeah. I think there was more to that conversation. I think that's just him being him, plus all the drinking on top well, of it, yeah. And what's really cool, first of all, Podrick's a badass, but he's yeah. like, his loyalty and undying loyalty to Brienne is like, he he looks at her to get a drink, and yeah. it's like a motherly bond, but yeah. also like, I am your commander. And he just like, can I have a bit? And then Tyrion just yeah. knocks it. I love his look, how he always gets like, where he's like, yeah. tucks his, like, his lips inside his yeah. mouth, and he overpoured it completely, and then yeah. Podrick's like, yeah. Oh, it was so good. It's like sl- slipping a Mickey inside your drink cup or whatever kind of thing at a party. But yeah, that that whole scene was amazing. And then obviously leading to the Hound and Arya. No, the, that, the that Nighting. Cuts. Not yet. Oh, it cuts? Sorry. I, I, I have it in order nope. of when the okay. cuts. So after My that, bad. the Hound and Arya have their meet and yeah. uh, she goes and talks to him and then Beric shows up too. And she's yeah. talking about how like, this is my last night with you, whatever Don't she want called him. Uh, miserable old shits. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the hound, still proud of her. Yeah. You know, super proud of her and stuff. And he's up there waiting. Uh, Barrack shows up, which leads me to believe that Barrack is definitely gone. I could see the hound surviving. We want to see the Clegane Bowl. We and need I, to see. I, the I think the writers want to see the Clegane Bowl. Uh, absolutely. Too. And also him holding the sword that lights on fire, which is fitting with his character. Because I could see that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I see that. I see Barrack risking his life for the hound. Yeah, and then him getting the sword, and then the hound like finally getting over his fear of fire, fire which yeah. I think it's. I feel he kind of he kind of did yes and no because he saw the vision and he realized what the fire was telling him sure. and doing. But I think yeah, a little bit he's still afraid, but not as much potentially. Yeah, uh, and then Arya pieces out to go do some stuff. Now, gentlemen, mm-hmm. we've seen incest, we've seen people's dicks get cut off, 
Yes. We've seen some pretty shitty rape scenes. Yes. Oh, that big puh, sorry. Um, and I didn't realize this till the next day. Actually, no, hold on. We've seen that. Why does this Arya and Gendry scene feel so weird to me? Am I you saw her up? when she was like 10 years old on the show? 12, I guess. No. And the number one thing trending on Twitter was Maisie Williams' age, yeah. which she's 22. She's legal. Yeah. But I don't know if it's just because of, I don't think it's even her. It's the fact that he is so much older, like, and he looks so much older. And I didn't need to see How Maisie much older Will- do you think he is, though? At least 10 years. So and he looks like he's so 20 he'd probably years older. a little bit younger than John or yeah. same age as John. But, but but even then though we yeah. saw her when she was twelve so it's like that little sister thing yeah. and did we really need to see the butt and the side boob? That's all her though, because if you there's inside there's like lots of there's inside the episode and they were talking about that and Maisie Williams had complete control because again most of the older actors when they were eighteen obviously had nudity clauses and stuff they yeah the mostly um all the all the writers and stuff had the had the freedom to kind of do as much as they pleased. Freedom. But with Maisie, because she was so young, then never it was never put in there. So no, I, I get So when they no, that. but I'm just saying the the butt, the side boob, that was all her idea. Whether it needed to be in there, at the end of the day, I don't know. It, it is what it is. It's part of the scene. To her, she felt it was necessary to show a little bit, but not extreme and not it's, be it's not her that's that has the net that that chooses whether it's necessary or not. Because sure she does, she can choose. She no, cho- no, no. On what the directors want to show. No, but she, she had say but, no, but she had full control of that uh, that scene. No, I understand she had control oh. on the scene and how she's going to do whether she wants to strip down or not. I'm saying I don't think the directors needed to add that level. She could have just had a look. This is this is me. Okay. She could have just had a look, looked at Gendry, gave him that awesome line where it's like, "I'm not the red woman. Take your own pants off," mm-hmm. and then made the motion to take her pants off, and then done. And then show the clip after. And it felt re- like it did feel weird. Like it felt like and I don't know if it's because Maisie Williams still looks like she's 10 years old. Probably. And it it, it feels creepy watching it. Like I felt creeped out watching it. That's, and that was everyone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> apparently. But, so but that's where I'm saying we've seen some other fucked up shit that didn't really matter. Yeah. Or not matter, but it was really rough to watch, but it didn't make me feel the same way. It was just weird. And, and I didn't feel the whole showing the whole thing was necessary. Yeah. That was it's just, that's the, just it's also Thrones, right? So no, I get it. But <laughs> even with Cersei's thing with Euron, like they didn't even show anything. They just okay come into the room, and then after they're putting their clothes on, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but I do get to the character wanting she she questions him a bunch. How many women's? How yeah, many women's. How many about his sex life? How many women has he had? All that stuff, and um, and then what was the other one? Oh, and him revealing that he's a Baratheon oh, bastard. <laughs> that, yeah, but I don't think that matters anymore. I, I think it's literally like nobody. She, it still know, stopped but, her in her tracks. And she's sure. like, what? Yeah. Like come again kind of thing. So which goes back to what's his face telling Ned. I've got a, yeah. I've got a son. You've got a daughter, which kind of the memes came happened. out of that. It's like, that's not yeah. what we had in mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I just, yeah, I, I just felt it was, uh, I, I just, it was for mostly, for me, it was mostly the side boob in the butt. Yeah. Well, it's like, she's like that Batman character. It's kind of like watching Batman have sex with someone. It's just like weird. Like it's not something like you kind of expect from that character. That would be weird. That'd be really weird. I don't know. Yeah. Just, I also this is the first time I watched Game of Thrones with a group of people. Like other than yeah. that, I was watching by myself. So sure. if a sex scene comes on, it's kind of like you know, like I'll just whatever. I like, just go past it. Yeah. But like watching it with a group of people, especially in like it was a weird scene too, just because she looked like even just looking at her body, like she looked young. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I get that she had control, obviously. Yeah. Like, for me, it's different, though, because, sorry, but, like, we're, like, the same age range. Sure. Like, we're, like, decently close. Yeah. So, for me to be, like, it was kind of weird looking at, because even, like, in the show, I had no idea. I thought she was, like, 14, 13 at that time. <laughs> it's just fucking weird. Yeah. I also felt weird um, with the Sansa thing when she was, she was, she was young and she got raped. Like, yeah. that was, that was much more uncomfortable to, like, to... But yeah, people experience. aren't more as an arms. They weren't up as arms as they are now. Not, not really. Up I don't arms, remember. But they were just I don't like, remember if they were. That was a while yeah. back, right? But yeah, this one was. This one was definitely a, a, an interesting thing. And again, the number one um, topic. Let's get to the knighting. Hmm. That was awesome. Yeah. That was great. That that's that to me tells me that I think Jamie's dead next season. Yeah. Or next season, next episode. Could potentially be. Yeah, that makes sense. He knights the very person that changes him. Yeah. Which was great. Poetic. Super poetic. And his story 
ends in Winterfell as it started for us, right? Yeah. Uh, knighting Brienne, mm-hmm. fighting under Brienne, and dying for Brienne. Yeah. Also, Brienne can now knight Podrick if she wants. hi Yeah. yeah. Um, I but that was the thing, yeah, like, how even Tormund's question is like, why aren't you a knight? He's like, because that's tradition. It's like and I knight you nine times, ten times over. Whatever. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah, but, you know, he did the knight scene and it was awesome. Yeah. I just remember the last person I saw got knighted, uh, died right away. I'm talking about Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Seth is, you know, it's not really death. And yeah, yeah. Um, so we get to that. That that was such a great scene. Uh, and then everyone's like cheering her on, which was great. And mm. I loved how proud Tormund looked. Oh, yeah. Like S- he was clapping. clapping. Yeah. And he was so happy. Like, oh, yeah. Because he was looking at like this ass, ass backwards. Like you should be a knight. Like I would yeah. knight you and everything like that, which in the idea of Danny breaking the wheel, I think that is more breaking the wheel than Daenerys showing up and, and yeah. doing what she thinks she's doing right. Yeah, like, yeah. That's how you usher in a new era into Westeros. Like, yeah, that's a great one and the perfect person to do so. Yeah. Uh, Jorah and Lady Mormont talking. I thought that was awesome. And I was waiting for that. She's so it, dead. She's Probably, fucked. yeah. She's fucked. That's my initial thing. I could see that. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. No, that was a good interaction between them two. And even better, Sam and Jorah. Yep. Sam giving Jorah Heart's Bane, which I think... Uh, 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 in the past, someone had mentioned it. Jorah probably wouldn't have taken it, mm-hmm. but it would have been a slap in the face or an, a grievance or whatever if he wouldn't have. And it's actually like more. It was definitely more honorable to be like, "I accept this." I don't think if it especially came from Sam, he would never have yeah. denied him. Like he saved his life, exactly. so it's like, and yeah, Sam you got it. It. <laughs> it didn't even look like Jorah can carry it. Yeah, that'll no, be that's a big ass sword. It's, it's but it's it's a ba- it's a bastard sword, is what it is. So basically, it's a it's wielded two handed. So like right. your Witcher guy, that's why it's technically supposed to be like a back. You mean Geralt of Rivia? Whatever. Man. Get his name right. I don't care. Anyways, uh, it's a bastard sword, so it's held by with two hands, right? right? So it's not easy like normal, like even Longclaw apparently technically technically in the books is a bastard sword, so it should have been wielded with two, two hands. hands. So Heartsbane shows it. That's how Ice was so massive because it was, again, bastard sword kind of mm-hmm. thing or long sword, whatever. And that's how it could have gotten split into two normal swords. Exactly. Even Heartsbane could probably be done the same way if yeah. you really wanted to. That would have been more efficient. They should have just burned them down and given some people some regular swords. But no one knows how to work Valyrian steel technically. Even oh, right. to rework it. Oh, right. We're talking dragon glass, not Valyrian steel. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that was an awesome moment. Jorah's dead. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. That's my thing. Yeah. Um, and then we get the Podrick can sing and the actual actor can sing real well. Yeah. Like, and it was mentioned by one of the actors, apparently, I think when the actress said like, they're like any of you sing kind of thing. And then someone pointed out, yeah, he can. (laughs) It was so good. And And that reminded me of Pippin singing to in the, uh, that that's the Lord of the Rings part. The the most Lord of the Rings part. Okay. That he's doing. You've seen the Lord of the Rings, right? Oh, none of them. No, you should. Um, that last part where he's singing to the in, king, what's his re, name? Re, uh, Den- no, the steward. Steward, Denethor. sorry. Yeah. Denethor, and yeah. they're all like yeah. riding in like, and it, and it does a showing. I loved the um, Theon and Sansa eating soup together. The whole montage was beautiful. Like with the yeah. song and playing in the back, you see obviously Jorah, he's, he's riding into yeah. battle kind of, and he's keeping an eye on the horizon, seeing what's going to go on. Yeah. Um, obviously Grey Worm and Sunday share, share a last kiss probably. Yeah. Uh, I thought they did that before. No, they did that. Then. It's during the montage. Yeah, that, that was kind a really of nice montage, and that was a beautiful. Song. And then, like, because that, uh, then those like those pikes get posted in between them and right. stuff like that, and he carries on to do his thing. Uh, yeah, Sansa and Theon. What else yeah. is in that montage? I, yeah, I, I love Gilly. The oh, way... Sam, Gillian. Yep, and uh, little Sam little, little in Sam. the bed, kind of like reminiscent of the Titanic, almost. Dude, so I don't know if I was the one that mentioned it or you mentioned it I've, while we were watching it. I was just like, I've got Titanic, or maybe it was so. I think it was so. So, so yeah. also mentioned another thing that I forgot to bring up. She thought, and I forgot she mentioned this, but she told me, uh, she thought that Daenerys was going to walk in and ask Sansa to be her hand after she just had the conversation with Tyrion about maybe you shouldn't be my hand. Potentially, yeah. You should go in the crypts and be safe, which yeah. leads me to believe that Tyrion might end up. Sansa being to. would not. No, she Ever wouldn't. Accept. But I'm saying, like, <laughs> but yeah, maybe she's going in. Yeah, because the other thing we missed was this entire episode. People have been saying, "Go to the crypts; it's going to be safe." Danny told Tyrion, "Go to the crypts; it's going to be safe." I think they said it like 13 times. Yep, leading me to believe the crypts are fucked, pretty much, and they're massive. 
someone on YouTube had a video of like how big they actually are and how people have mentioned it. Mm-hmm. It is huge. Yeah. Like we'll we've only the seen a after. very small portion of it. Yeah. Um, and then we get John and Daenerys in the crypts after that uh, lovely moment. Awesome. And John tells her the truth about uh, her brother who she thought her brother had raped Lyanna yep. Stark. And he straight up tells her, yeah, my name, my real name is Aegon Targaryen. And yeah. the look on her face was great. Like on, from an acting perspective, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, holy shit, she reacted beautifully. Oh, yeah. No, that was a, anytime they've done the reveal, and I've gone back and watched every scene where they've done it with uh, Sam and Bran figuring it out. Yep. To Sam telling John, and then now him telling Danny, And it was, all of them have been perfect. I don't think you could have done it really any better. And they were acted beautifully, I think. I, do you have any thoughts on that? I thought it happened like really fast. I thought it was going to happen like True. much later. Yeah. I thought there was going to be some foreplay. Like I was going to, I thought he would have opened up like, listen, I've got something to tell you. Um, I don't really care about this throne you're going after. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, we can't have sex anymore. Mm-hmm. And the reason is because of this and this and this. And this. it just seemed like he would, like he turned to her. And maybe that's because the entire episode, we didn't see him barely. And he's he, been ghosting he kept his, her. He's kept his distance, yeah. right? So, so for... he was ghosting her, and then now it's just finally like bottled up. And he's not the most tactful. He is an idiot. Like, but this was actually perfect timing. He he in his head, like he's biding his time. Even when the when the before Ed joined John and Sam on the wall, mm-hmm. it was just Sam and John's. Like, are you just biding your time, kind of thing? And he sure. just gives him a look. He's like, man, just leave me alone, <laughs> sure. kind of thing. But. Him being in front, looking at Leanne, obviously brooding as he does and looking what's going on. And His brooding God. has improved. Absolutely. So it, it, when he's surrounded it by was Crips. perfect timing. Like guys, like, who is that? It's like, that's Leanna Stark. And then it goes into his story. Very perfect. I, I, I get it. Yeah. And and I I saw some people disagreeing with her not believing him. Like when she's like, wait, you're going to believe your brother who we don't know what the hell he's talking about. Yeah. Like Sam. If I found a revelation like that. Mm-hmm. I probably, if I was in her shoes, I'd probably question it. That's why I really like Danny sure. this time. Like she was, she was legitimately having some really good points about everything she was involved in, mm-hmm. and everyone got cut off. Like she got cut off. I'm sure that's that Daenerys and Sansa conversation would have been bigger. They got cut off by the horn. I think. Of... Well, no, they got the, the Sansa and Daenerys one was oh, from Theon coming in, and then right. now they got cut the off Maester by that. Came. Like there was probably a much bigger conversation going to happen. And then all of a sudden the horn blew and they're like, we well, got to like battle. Because it ended with her, you have a claim to the Iron Throne. And he didn't get a chance to say, like, I don't care about the Iron Throne. Sure. Regardless, like, and that's it. Yeah. But again, they got caught off and so on and so forth. But then they, on the ramparts after that, they share the glance of like, yeah, let's let's get ready. And like, just table this. It doesn't matter right now. They had to. Yeah, yeah. Like, it had to get into gear. What else do I have? Horn rings. Episode ends with the Sons of Craster staring at Winterfell. Yeah. They all have those... Uh, Olympic style spears that mm-hmm. uh, the king yeah. took down. Uh, some, some, yeah, it was all spears. I Ver- think. What was the Viserion? Viserion. Yeah, they're all going to be throwing some some spears. Which kind of works up. They as, got their as little... the first one to go down. Technically, yeah. uh, I guess Rhaegal technically should have gone, but yeah. And he's got ninety nine sons. And there might be a, there might be a few less considering John sure. killed a couple. Sure. And, and their whole plan is the the Death Star thing, where it's like let's kill the Night King and get that whole all. brand thing. Yeah. He's That's the exhaust happen. port at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. And then shit's going down. And we're getting into the, the next episode, Big Battle. Um, I'm now on, of the belief that that teaser with John Sansa, and Arya in the crypts mm-hmm. with the snow bellowing in is actually much more telling than anything. I think the crypts are going to get fucked. Yeah. And I also still am on the of the belief that the Night King is going has gone south to go turn some people I, I, I was going to say, I, I don't think he's actually himself. there. I don't, that's what I'm saying. Because he can he take his dragon there. everywhere, right? So he's like, you guys go post up outside. I wonder if I'm going to go take care of some shit and bring some more people. I'm I like what came up with just some stupid idea I had in my head. What I would do if I was him mm-hmm. might actually do it. Or he just doubles back and comes through the crypts. The other thing is this theory that he is a Stark. Sure. So he might know the crypts better than most, right? So he, there may be a secret passage. He might find his way to there come are. up. And he'll bring the dead of the Starks. Like, that's the other thing. He'll bring all the dead Starks back to life kind of thing well, in and, the crypts. And the crypts, uh, they were talking about something how when Winterfell was sacked at one point, there was the, like, they got a wave through an underground passage or yeah, something. Yeah, there's plenty. That's going to play into yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. But he might know where yeah. they are. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. Like that 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 whole thing uh is going to be pretty interesting. The main character deaths in that next episode should be I those ones you mentioned are very likely every I saw Arya to dying too. Aya could be dying because you see her even from the very first trailer that came out, the big one. She's running away from something, and, and that's this next some, episode. Some guy did a, a a blow up and clearing of the like reimaging that, Enhance. and they Enhance. saw and they lightened it up, and they saw a figure of what looked like the Night King. So the Night King could be in Winterfell at some point yeah. in the crypts, like you said, and she's yeah. facing him straight on. Well, and that's where her conversation with Gendry about the night, the death has many faces and all yeah. that and throwing the daggers, like all of that stuff is like, the, you're all cool. Like you're a ninja and you're awesome and an assassin and everything like that. But that trailer of her running away scared as shit is like, oh, this is much more real than I thought. Like yeah. I could have a thousand faces on a wall. Sure. But this is this is different, mm-hmm. and that, that and this next one. There's a lot of scenes where it was John by himself in the last one, and yep. like there, it's cloudy, so yep. that could be signs of like scenes of when he shows up. Yeah, he looked very determined. He looked very uh, he looked good. He looked fine. <laughs> uh, anything else? Game of Thrones from last episode. We were that's we it. went we went on a tear on that one. That's true. Um, did you guys enjoy the full breakdown in order? Yes, very much so. Okay. Good luck this week. Spoilers, 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 spoilers of Endgame are happening now. So if you don't want to listen to the spoilers, you can tune off now and then come back. Uh, Let's get into it. Endgame is upon us. 22, no, sorry, 11 years, 22 movies. We experience Endgame from 11 Mm o'clock, well, 11, 17, and 2 o'clock in the morning or whatever yesterday. Yeah, worth it. I don't know where to start with this, but and I don't know how far we want to go. We're already an hour. And so if you're gonna minutes. do a breakdown, I think we should just do a basic review. Scenes Done. we liked, disliked. Done. Okay. Yeah, because my breakdown with Jimmy is gonna be intense. Mm-hmm. First of all, Anthony, did you like it? Yes. Vasily, did you like it? Yes. And I really liked it. Do you feel they stuck the landing? Yes. Do you feel like they stuck the landing? Yes. And I am. A co- we have a chords. <laughs> I have a question though. Please go. Start. Which was better, Infinity War or Endgame? After less than twenty-four hours after viewing Endgame, it can yep. change. You yep. can come back and retract that statement. But sure. <laughs> which one? Um, I'm gonna say Infinity War, mm-hmm. and the reason I'm saying that is because it was. They are. They are such different movies. Yes. And Infinity War is more cohesive. Like, it is just, boom, start to finish. You know where we are. Everything flows together. Yeah. Like, this had so much... Endgame had so much to it that you need to, like, keep going and keep going. But for now, Infinity War is the better movie. I agree. As, as a stat... Like, as a singular movie. I'd have to say so, too. After a few viewings, I'm... I Like, I will probably end up liking Endgame more. Well, you can... Just because... Li- I like Endgame. Like, I think the final battle was amazing. Yeah. But Infinity War as a movie, it was just much more like emotional. Like, yeah, you, it made you, you actually more, like care yeah. more. Like, this one was just like, it was a lot of fan service in this movie, which isn't a bad thing. Yeah. Okay. So I, I thought the same thing, but I think in this case, it worked. Like, it makes fa- sense. Fan but... service is absolutely paramount. Yeah. There's a lot of times where where movies do the fan service, and it's like you didn't earn any of this. Mm-hmm. I feel after 22 movies, you earned it, and. They had the fan service in here, and I thought it was great. Did you guys tear up at all? I teared up twice. Actually, during the end, when Hawkeye and his fam, I don't know why that got me the most. The <laughs> yeah, that was the oh, only yeah. time. The beginning, I was yeah. like, that right set off the, the fucking tone. Oh, my goodness. I, I kind of, we knew, I think we knew that, that kind of happening. Like, it's yeah. going to start with them. For sure it that is. That was shot but, so, actually, no, sorry, three times I teared up. Anyways, go ahead. Yeah. No, the start, definitely. Uh, seeing Tony that thin that was something i never actually anticipated for whatever reason i never anticipated but like i should have you should expect yeah how he got so sickly and stuff like that and how he looked obviously coming off and that kind of thing it was it was really emotional to watch right and And his breakdown was just beautiful like i was that okay so i i didn't tear up at that one but Mm. i just felt super like yeah like whatever um the hawkeye one i was getting a little teared up because the way they shot it and Clint's reaction while running around, like, I was just like, like, what would I do? Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not a father. I don't have kids. Yeah. But still, like, just how do you deal with that? Um, Scott Lang's reunion with his daughter. Yep. That was 
just crazy and i was praying i was like even when him looking him just looking at the names and stuff like that was pretty intense and seeing his name yeah and it's cool like the the vanished literally just the vanished i thought that was crazy yeah um i will say one other thing even though you were sitting next to me and i was throwing some comments i liked captain marvel in this movie yeah, I know. I was always throwing some shade at him, like, "Hey, do you like her now?" Or this, this is that? is this is the oh, this is the first time. Like, aside from the fact, my first comment was like, "Oh, f-, like my first comment was literally, oh fuck off,' because she showed up and brought him down." However, I knew that earlier. Really. I I figured yeah. that was gonna happen, and mm-hmm. it makes sense with the end credit scene or the the last credit scene or whatever when she showed up in in her movie. Yeah, right. And she's like, "What's where's Fury?" Mm-hmm. Then they tell her. Then she goes out, looks around, and all that stuff. And she's like, and and right off the bat, let's go get Thanos. Mm-hmm. This was, I had no idea, like nothing that I had in my head happened in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they completely threw us off. I I didn't know what to expect really and how it would play out, but the fact that it happened the way it did, it was amazing. Like the roller coaster you took that you know, you lost. You shows that we lost Clint, and then the Avengers. No, Clint lost his family. Whatever. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, and then the Carol Danvers bringing Tony back and then mm-hmm. going. To- oh, I called that too. I think you did earlier. I said, we were talking about how he's going to get back and shit. And well, I said, like, I kind of had a yeah. feeling too. Yeah. She'd yeah. be up in space and stuff like that, but bring Tony back. Um, and then like make a plan. Let's go get Thanos right now. Yeah. And that happened like super quick. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? And, and then Thor fucking cut his head off. Like he said right away. But it, at that point it was like the. Fuck this! That's what it's so. It was so great. Just that as he was talking, and yeah. Thor's like, "I'm fucking done with this," because he is, he is feeling the full weight of the failure. Yeah. Like he feels that he is the reason why it happened. Exactly. And yep. him cutting his head off just it was so clean too. Yeah. Also his hand. Oh yeah. Does, does, and he's like, "What'd you do? I went for the head." <laughs> and he just walks away. Yep. I went through a post too where it's Austin Powers saying, like, doing the head jokes, like, oh, that's not how you get a head in life. <laughs> <laughs> but I have, to, I have to wait a bit because, you know, because <laughs> people. Um, <laughs> and then, so we, we've kind of, obviously, we're yeah, done yeah. back and forth. It doesn't matter. Um, the. The time jump? The Okay, yeah. I guess we'll. Okay. The Hulk thing was bothering me in the beginning. Yeah. And then I got used to it. Mm hmm. The Hulk being both a mix of the two, yeah, um, was kind of it was it was funny in the diner. I felt that they kind of ran the bits a little long, mm-hmm. both with the Hulk and the diner taking the photo, not taking the photo, yeah, 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 and the Thor and uh, Star Lord thing at the end, like that ran on a little long. Yeah, those right? have been end credit. Why didn't they just put those in the end credit? Those could have been end credit scenes. That's a good point. Like, yeah, they were so into the movie though. Yeah. Well, and and what's crazy is like literally we're okay. We're thinking going into Endgame, we're going after Thanos. Yeah. They literally did that in the fir- the opening five minutes before yeah. the first. I was like, what now? Yeah. The five-year thing was always speculated. I just wondered how they were going to do it. Like, would yeah. it take them five years to figure out a plan, how to yeah. find Thanos, get the Infinity Stones, and do their thing? And I was, I was like, when Captain Marvel was like, he, it's just him. There's no army. There's no nothing. Because she felt the stones, like, she, whatever, however she can feel the stones being yeah. activated because he destroyed them, right? He used yeah, them to yeah, destroy yeah. them. And that was just like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Right? I'm like, this is how we're starting. Like, I, I don't, I don't get this, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah, you guys go. Where? What other points? Ah, uh, so let me just think for this. Yeah, I yeah. Had, uh, it's Thor. a lot. I tried going today at one o'clock to go see it, but it was packed. Thor yeah. annoyed the shit out of me. Really? Just it too was, much. I well, it was it. too much. I loved it. <laughs> and like, it was funny at first. That and like, I understood like people were like, oh, like when he grabbed the hammer, he should have got ripped. But I understood that would make no fucking sense. That would make no sense. But just like in the he final, never did in the in the final battle when he was going and there were the three of them going against Thanos, it just so... made it look like less good, yeah. like, less epic. I don't think so. Because you didn't even notice his belly anyways. All you saw was his massive yeah. Odin style and he looked beard. Like, I, when he was in that like uh, new Asgard, yeah. did anybody else get like Aquaman vibes of how he I, looked? A and little shit? bit. I haven't yeah, seen beard. Aquaman. Uh, or I mean, just in no, just because he was bit. more he was more groomed. If you've never seen the Big Lebowski, which you put it on your on your thing, yeah, yeah, that was good. I loved the Big Lebowski, so I loved what they plus did the with Fortnite tease. Mm. That was good with Korg and I'm Meek. I'm so happy Korg was there. That was so awesome. Yeah, and like the 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 Hulk showing up yeah. and everything. I and definitely like. I read a lot of the comments people made on your post. I'm like, yeah, Thor being big. It was hard to watch, but it made sense. It was what it was. Yes, it would have been. I thought too. I'm like, okay, is he gonna like 
basically he's going to use the thunder to like shed all the fat away from him yeah. and be shredded again. But that's why wearing black slims you. True. <laughs> but it's like we never got to see the Thor we saw in Infinity War. We were like, yes. But we did in Infinity War. True. This is this is the thing that I that what I was piecing together today because I've done nothing but think about this movie, um, like most people. Yeah. the The whole thing of his arc is not having to be the person that he thinks he has to be. Yeah. So that's what he did in Infinity War. He did everything. He took the the brunt of a dying star mm-hmm. for this thing, and just like in Thor, the first one, he is still like he he is a child. Yeah. He is. Right. And that's where it makes sense. Like for me, it makes sense. Some other people, I totally understand if it didn't work for you. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why it makes sense, because he took the law so big. He didn't say anything. I still felt the I like this one thing was kind of stupid. That was my thing. And I loved how Rocket was like, I think Rocket was throwing some shade towards her, mm-hmm. which I just naturally appreciated because I'm a dick sometimes. Mm-hmm. And he didn't say anything that whole time. He had that look that was in the trailer, just looking at him like. I can't do anything. Mm-hmm. I, I've been I've been poised to be something that I believe that I have to be. Yeah. And it's for nothing. Like yeah. I, I, I've done so much between Ragnarok and Infinity War, and it's for nothing. Mm-hmm. So that's why I kind of feel like him reverting to being just a child and just escaping his yeah. his uh his problems as as how he's dealing with it. Because everyone's yeah. dealing with it different, right? I thought that's why I, I was fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, Valkyrie I, being back was good. I loved seeing her. Yeah, that was the thing too. So the reason why I liked Infinity War better was because it's just so unpredictable. Like the mm-hmm. ending just like caught me off guard. But just for, the ending, just like everything, yeah. kind of because I didn't watch the trailer because I just sure. went in like blind and shit. And I knew it was gonna be a two parter, but I didn't know yeah. like how they were gonna do it. But like End Game, I like knew a lot of the end. Like I knew how it was gonna end. I like I could idea. just tell watching it like five minutes before when Captain America was on the ground struggling. I'm like, okay. Like they're gonna, so I don't know. I don't know Sam, but I knew that like, people were gonna come help him. Like all the old people were gonna well, come back. Listen, you knew that, that. See, this is the thing with the with the trailers or whatever. You know these things are gonna happen, and this is why I have a problem with people always bitching about spoilers and stuff. I don't give a flying fuck how it happened. Even with Endgame, I don't give a f- like. No, what happened? But you want to find out how it sorry, happened. Sorry, I want to see how. So when I watch Endgame, let's say. The road leading up to Endgame was much more hyped than what Endgame was. Mm-hmm. That's why a lot of people are going to probably like be number on the one fence comment about on your thing overhyped, but it was still a great movie. And but the well, thing Infinity that, War that too. true, but that's why Infinity War was its own movie. Yeah, this was reconciled. We're taking care of twenty two. Sorry, I was going to say twelve, twenty two movies and eleven years or so. Yeah, of film of characters yeah so for that part of it that's why it's so different i guess and that's why like your concerns about it didn't matter to me because i'm just looking at the road that's happening Mm -hmm. and by the time you get to end game like it had all the things that i like i didn't know was going to happen i knew certain things were going to happen and i figured people were going to come back and my expectation was something this big you're going to bring back everybody Wow. And with people bitching about Civil War being like, well, the comic book has all these characters in it. Well, fuck you. They doubled down on everything here. Oh, yes, they did. Like, they brought everybody. But it's the way that it happened. Mm-hmm. And and what led up to those moments of, of them doing it. That's why it was totally worth it. Yeah. Even if I know what's going to happen. Like, I know what's going to happen at the end of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I still love the whole thing. And I still get, like, jacked for it. Yeah. Right? Favorite moment? The ending. Like, I feel like the f- whole movie, like I-, I read people say this too, like a lot of people didn't really like the movie, but the third act like really saved it. Yeah. Because it was pretty like, I don't know, it was just like compared to Infinity War, Infinity War's overall was like consistent, but this one was kind of just like, it was like building up to the biggest thing, which th- you know. I think that's what it, the thing, yeah, that's the thing. Infinity War was nonstop. It was a quick movie. It's long, but it felt quick. You Before you realize that you're in Wakanda already and Thor's getting his Stormbreaker. Yeah. So it happened super quick. Yes, Endgame. It being three hours to me didn't feel like three hours. No it actually went by quick. really quick. Yeah, man. But those laws are correct that they said um, building, creating their plan, talking to Tony, getting him involved. He creates the the whole. He figures out he the, figures the out solution. At the end, he's like, yeah. "Damn it, I figured it out." And he's like, "I want to walk away." But Pepper's like, "Can you though?" Yeah. So that whole thing, he comes back. They make their plan. 
And then they realize we have to go sep- at this separately. And that's where they start making their plan of, okay, well, there's at least three in New York at the exact same time. Lucky. And we can go do that. So breaking down those aspects, you have what the first team is Hulk. Cap, it was, it was Hulk, Hulk, Cap, Cap, Iron Man, Ant-Man. 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 Yeah, yeah. So Hulk is going after the Time Stone mm-hmm. to see the Sorcerer Supreme. That was a great interaction yep. between the two. I love that. And then you have uh, Cap. Cap oh. on Cap was amazing. Cap on Cap. That Not even that. Was amazing. The Winter Soldier callbacks. Me and my friend, we always like have this joke where we we'll just st- go up to somebody, like go up yeah, to each other, and just stare at each other, <laughs> yeah. and just like before we get started, you want to get out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. we always yeah. have this That's joke. Awesome. And like just him walking in there, all like mm-hmm. in this like shot for shot shit, and then he's just like, "Hail Hydra!" And oh, that's that from was. the comic, right? When everyone was bitching about the comic that came out. Yeah, but he was actually that- Hydra. No, 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 but what I'm yeah, I know like, it was a callback too. Right in in the they they retconned it or whatever mm-hmm. somehow because people weren't happy. So with in this it, right? comic, but like Captain he was America was part of he, he, being Hydra. They oh, threw like he threw Mind a Stone. person. I didn't read the whole comic, but I yeah, just yeah. I read that panel or whatever, yeah, yeah. and it was he he did something, and then the comic book is or the 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 slide is him looking down saying "Hail Hydra," mm-hmm. and all along Captain America has been like a secret yeah. uh, a sleeper Hydra agent yeah. cell or whatever. Yeah, that's why I was like, oh my god. I remember this. We talked about this. The Hulk being the baby he is again in a, in mm-hmm. that scene where he's like, I don't want to take the stairs. Oh and yeah, that so was really many funny. stairs. Yeah, that was. Funny. And it was like, it was amazing. Why would it was he just jump out the window though. Like, why would? That's what I was thinking. Just well, not to make too. any more. I, I guess I maybe the no destruction. Part of it. He's like, just go downstairs, kind of thing. He punched the elevator door. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then like the fumble with the tesseract. But also that one was where's great. Loki now. Because he's exactly. gone. Well, he's got his show on Disney Plus, and yeah. I think a lot of this stuff is going to lead into the Disney. Plus I'm excited stuff. for fucking Winter Soldier and yeah. Falcon now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. did you? Yeah, I I didn't expect that they would do it the way that they did, but I had a feeling that Falcon was going to be the new Captain America, which I believe he deserves it more yeah. than Winter Soldier. Well, like just for that representation. You know? Yeah. Well, like, I, that's a, that's the word's fine. Where it's like not like shoehorned and like well because they, but the thing is he earned it. Mm-hmm. He's been with Cap longer than Bucky and Cap have been. Like he's been fighting with Cap, yeah. especially from Civil War to Infinity War. If anyone deserves Winter Soldier it, from or sorry, Winter Soldier to Infinity War, uh, if anyone deserves it, it's yeah. that, it's yeah. him. But one thing I dislike during the, I didn't dislike it, but I just question it in no, theaters. No, no movie's perfect. Go for it. But it was when all the women came together on the battlefield. I'm like, come on, guys. Like, there's, I get it, but like, there's male warriors around. They're not going to sit back and let the females just charge all at once. Like, well, I just found it like, well, they're really, just at a different point. Think I of think it that, that way. I'll tell you what that scene was. Um, Black Widow sacrificed herself and we saw her die. Mm-hmm. And that was because she was the first one in the MCU, the first female there. Mm-hmm. And so that's like all the females now are, are fighting on behalf of her. Like, I, that's yeah. what I saw out of it. I'm like, that's fair. This is. For like, it, without it saying a big banner for Black Widow, yeah, that's how I felt it was because, yeah, we lost Black Widow. We don't have her in there, and so this is what she's like. This is this, where it starts. Her it's, homage, right? Yeah, she died so they can just fucking go. And she, she has. A, I'm confused. She has a movie coming out. Well, that's a prequel, it's though. Prequel. That's a different story. Basically, her being <laughs> Natasha Romanoff. And, I think it's going to lead up into her and her becoming yeah. part of Shield kind of thing. So. Was it Clint? That got Natasha in there, yes. right? Which, Which is, is why I thought it was even more beautiful. I um, I had an issue with Vormir, but at first, I but I think it was. I found that scene really funny though. Just like I know it was like really serious, but just when they were like kind of like being the shit out of each other, like kill themselves. Oh man, they were going like crazy. Oh yeah. My question is, what if two other people went there that didn't actually love each other? Why well, they had to go back? But but that's what I'm saying. Like they'd have to. They'd have to. That's the, the thing. Like somehow. sacrifice someone like, you don't really love. What but... if what if Nebula and War Machine actually went to Vormir? It's like, well, well, didn't I she don't love you? Like but you're, Nebula you knew in nice. a way, didn't she? Was what that? is it? Like Nebula knew, like the plan. Like Vormir. Yeah. Like when they go, like I feel like deep down she knew. Like we can't maybe, go. Maybe they don't know how to expect it. I don't know. Maybe they didn't. They, yeah. Maybe it was different at that timeline versus the timeline that Thanos went for it, whatever it, reason. I and don't it know. makes sense for them because they do have a love for each other. For like sure they, they do. They, they have such love and respect for each other. Yeah. Um, Hawkeye was fucking badass in this movie. Mm-hmm. He was yeah. great. No, he um, was very awesome. Does he not have a TV show yet? I don't think so. No. I think he's going to retire officially. Well, apparently, no, he's supposed to have one ushering in the... Kate Bishop? Kate Bishop. That'd be sweet. He's supposed to have one, I think. That one's like not announced, but yeah. it's in the making, let's say. Yeah, yeah. Um, Thor I, and Rocket. Thor and Rocket. 
That was the, that was really nice. I'm going. You know and what? then with the mother, I thought that was great. Yeah. I love that. But that's like, go back to your like Thor being a kid. He's like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. Like, he's like because freaking he, out. He's been a pampered child. You know how you mentioned that somebody having all the stuff and can't handle it Spoon when we're talking fed. about Game Game of Thrones? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what that's like. Even though he's had to deal with stuff, like he didn't want to be a king. Then he came back from Ragnarok and, and destroyed Asgard and all that stuff, right? And you know. He's still the same Thor inside. That's why he never went to the, for the head. And that's why... Like, he didn't go for the head because he wanted to well, I also let, feel him know. Like, let him know that he did it. The director said, like, uh, I forget which one, but he just said, like, you can't aim for the head. Like, the head's such a smaller target. Like, sure. you're trained to go for the chest. You're a police officer. Yeah. And also, like, if you aim for the head and you miss, sure. like, you're fucked. If you, you got, aim for the chest. You've got so many more avenues to miss yeah. as opposed to here. But he also, at the end, like, he fucking started, like, you know, getting cocky and pushing it mm. in deeper instead of just, you know, ending it. Which... Well, and, and But that's to his character. Just mm-hmm. like the Star Wars thing. It's a human moment. And that's to his character. Yeah. Like, this is why I I bowed down to the Russos for t- taking us from Winter Soldier all the way here because holy flying shit. You can definitely tell in this movie that they, there was a lot that they had to handle. Mm-hmm. Like, oh. you know how you sometimes you feel yeah. the weight of something and like... These guys definitely like it was it was pretty intense to film them back to That's back. why it was perfect how Anthony Russo yes had Joe, his, sorry, Joe Joe Russo. Joe Russo had his cameo in that support group that Captain mm-hmm. America had. Yep. And I think one of his daughters was in there too. I'm not sure. I don't know what his what daughter looks like. Anyways, but him having it and like him talking it sounded like him as the director, not him as that character. Oh, that's what you got? Oh, okay. A that's little bit. Just the way he was talking and, you know, yeah. moving on like it, he was kind of talking about his journey as being part of this, which is why maybe Anthony should have been in there too. Like uh, both but, of them. But Joe's cameoed in every single movie they've done. Has he? Yeah. I've never paid attention. Also, Winter say- Soldier, he was the guy, um, he was one of the doctors helping Nick Fury in the cave. Mm-hmm. Civil War, he was the dead guy in the bathroom, uh, I believe. Um, and I don't know how the other ones, but he's cameoed okay. in all of them. I've not paid attention to that at all. Also, Stan Lee's cameo in this, if this was his last cameo, I'm disappointed. Yeah, it was like Captain Marvel's was a good like that could be a good ending cameo. Yeah. That like, one was really nice, but like this one was kind of just like yeah. I get it; they can't really plan for his death, you know, sure. before they film the fucking cameo. But do you mm-hmm. think they would have filmed? I, I have a feeling that they filmed it already before he died. I feel like Sp- oh yeah, but Spider Man's like I know there's one in Spider Man. There's no yeah. way they didn't because they have so much unused footage. They can just mm-hmm. even like if they pull a Deadpool and put a painting of him on. Or a Let's mural. be honest. The way that they got the technology down, the way that Samuel Jackson looked like in Captain Marvel, like they could put him for cameos for the end well, of time. Yeah, um, yeah, it was uh, it was an okay cameo. Yeah, you know, but okay. So my issue, actually, the issue that I have with this movie is um, the music cues. Like after after um, Clint lost his family. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really weird that they picked that song to lead into Nebula. Oh yeah, I was really happy. And no, it wasn't. I, I don't think it, it wasn't a happy song. Um, it was when the Marvel Studios credits mm-hmm, yeah. were going on. It wasn't a happy song. Yeah, that was a and, surprising one. And the too. lyrics tied into kind of what was going on. I don't remember them off the top of my head, but I remember mm-hmm. at the time thinking like, okay, I, I get the lyrics of this, and I get that they did that because they were on the what's it called? What's this ship called? I can't remember. Oh. They were on mm-hmm. his ship, so clearly they have his music playing there, and they probably played it for a bit, and they were doing their little thing. It just felt really jarring. Like, it felt off. It didn't fit. You know that conversation we had about, oh, well, I think you and I had it with Nick mm-hmm. about um, uh, popular songs in movies like this. Like, this is a movie that didn't need it mm-hmm. at all. Same with Infinity War, didn't need it. Um, What else do you guys want to talk about for this one? I want to say, best. we should do the best moment of the movie. Go for it. Picking up Molnir. Oh yeah, that was that was amazing. Absolutely, yeah. that was like, I, that was the one thing where my jaw dropped because I didn't expect that to fucking happen. It was kind of like, yeah. totally out of mind because you're still looking at Thor and you're thinking maybe he's summoning an idiot. He's got two of them, which doesn't seem like a very smart but way. Didn't to he also like take that out of the timeline and he didn't give it back? That's what I was asking him. I think was asking you. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Doesn't he? Does he not have Mjolnir in? To the dark world now, like does yeah, kind of up needs everything it. and and yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, no, definitely Cap lifting up Mjolnir and like the thing is he harnessed the the thunder. 
So I think Mio, yeah, I think Mjolnir has its own pow- own power source, obviously, so I it can Mjol- harness whatever. Mjolnir summons the lightning, whereas in Ragnarok they established that Thor actually can do it. it. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a bit of a. It was still amazing. I also want to say one thing I disliked was like when Tony Stark was dying, mm-hmm. and like it kind of felt like it was like a line of people just coming in and out, in and out to say goodbye. And like in Infinity War, Spider Man dying with Tony Stark was so like emotional. Mm-hmm. But in this one, it was kind of just like he kind of got and then people he got shoved out of the way. And it wasn't well, really an actual Pepper, emotional Pepper thing. Pepper moved him, but yeah. it wasn't like they already had their moment already. She kind of knew it's what her, was going on. Yeah, and it's her moment at that point. Yeah, that's that's why I had no problem with that. That actually was my other yeah. tearjerker, um, big time. Best uh, best and worst moment. Oh. Well, I can't. I can't really think of worse than any. Honestly, I don't yeah. have a worst moment in the movie. It's just, yeah, definitely Cap picking up Mjolnir is pretty intense. But like him just getting his ass beat by Thanos was just unnerving. That part, that's what I was like. Was I, 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 to see. I had a sinking feeling. I was like, this is this is what's gonna happen. This is where it's gonna happen. Yeah. But I'm glad. It's kind of nice how they let Tony have the battle death, mm-hmm. and then Cap got his sort of death to tie off his end too well, but it fits with their arcs yeah. like he he made weapons he became a weapon mm-hmm. and then he finally used his weapon for good. to save people yeah um whereas cap he just wanted to help people yeah and he it, it's always been that i want that dance and even though in ultron he's like the guy that wanted all that yeah went into the ice 70 years ago or whatever it was but that moment when they went back to 1970 when he sees peggy yeah that's when he's like I could have a do over. Yeah. Which that that's a, that's Cap's selfish moment where he went back and changed that reality for Peggy where he never went into the ice technically right. or or she he came out. Yeah, of, I I don't know what he would have I don't know doing, right? how that worked out and what he did to make it work but clearly he had a full life with her. Yeah. Maybe he had kids. They had that dance. They had that dance and yeah. kid maybe they had kids who knows. Yeah. Yeah. But you see he grows old and stuff like that so but it's yeah, but Cap Shield breaking that was intense, and then the I am Iron Man. It's like I am. Uh, I thought it was like I am inevitable. It's like well, that I am. An, so I am perfect. Iron Man. Like I was like, oh. So one guy tried DMing this his theory of like this that scene, and in the beginning or in like the With Iron Man theory. one. I know this. I told him. I said that was like the biggest stretch I've ever heard. But so when he's at the press conference and he says I am Iron Man, and he looks at the piece of paper. Yeah. He said, "Oh well, you know, I bet he read." on a piece of paper, you're going to wield the Infinity Gauntlet because he's holding it in his right hand and he says, I am Iron Man. I said, maybe he's just right-handed. I said, that's, yeah. I, I told him, I, this guy like, is fucking famous for his stretches. Like, we always make fun that of him. That is a stretch. But I told him, like, that's not a fucking theory. Yeah, no, they didn't nothing. plan that shit out. I feel that's nothing. I I'm think... like, that's not even nothing to look further into. No. What yeah. theory could you possibly have from that? He's like, he literally, he's, that's his line. If you read, if you read, if you read, you're going to wield the Infinity Gauntlet. You wouldn't know what the fuck that is. Yeah. What is he gonna? Uh, well, from what I understand, that based on that article that you sent me, yeah, like the whole Infinity War thing really didn't start kicking off until Dark World. Dark World, yeah. And I read that article, and I've actually read a couple other ones. Like they knew that they were going towards something, but once they introduced the Ether, which was the only second one that we had, then they brought the Guardians. Then they yeah. brought everything else. Because so. no one knew about the Mind Stone technically. Exactly. The Tesseract yeah. was the only thing, but did they truly know it was an Infinity Stone? Right. No, they didn't. Yeah. The Ether yeah. was the first of it all. Yeah. And like I said, I, I like Captain Marvel in this. I loved how she came in. I thought that was badass. And I thought when Thanos tried to punch her, mm-hmm. that was badass. So and like it just bounced right off. As much as you were worried, the Russos definitely ne- let, never let her steal the show too much. Her she breaking didn't steal the show at all. So and that's the thing. She had her moment where she destroyed Thanos' ship, and he you saw him, he's like, fuck. Sure. But what else like, was fuck. gonna happen? But that was her moment. But the best, turning into Karen Danvers instead <laughs> with their haircut. Yeah. And someone posted that in your in your uh, in your feed too. She's like, like Captain Marvel looks like she's gonna ask for the manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where's she your went, manager, Thanos? I want to see him right now. <laughs> I, I personally like it's not it's not it's too far into the Karen, but yeah. that's what I said. I turned to you. I'm like. She's full Karen now. She's I not Carol with a C. She's Carol with a K with now. A K, yeah, <laughs> I, I personally liked her hair um, before, Long. but now we're talking about fucking hair. It doesn't. But really you know, it's just funny. Uh, but yeah, that that's well, the first thing I thought. Right now, because you even said yeah. it to me in the theater. You're like, it Karen. is very. That's well. That's why it works, right? It yeah. is. It is comic accurate. Yeah. yeah. But one thing also that annoyed me is they always they put they had the gauntlet ready, 
but none of them thought to like maybe ease into it instead of just putting fucking six infinity stones on your hand and just shoving There's it no on. Other way oh, Hulk it, eased, in, eased into it? No, but like, not really because they just put it like, you know when Thanos, he did it one by one and he kind of like gradually built it up. But they like kind of just like went full like zero to a hundred. Yeah, but he had the glove on at that point so that and he was getting them one by one, obviously. But They're not going to be like, here. You five guys hold these stones. I've got these ones. Now give it to me one at a time. Well, maybe they would get so fucking burnt. That's all I'm saying. They would get burnt regardless. I think so, too. I think Thanos is the only one capable of wielding it just because of what kind of being he is. Even the Hulk got... Now, here's the thing. I, we were talking about this before you got here, how but all these guys tried to use the Infinity Stones full force. They yeah. tried to do the snap and everything. They never tried just using it individually like Thanos they like use the power stone use the reality separately and well, do their thing to lead up for that the reason was is that I, I didn't understand that Stark Tech could handle infinity gauntlets while hmm. Thanos had to go to Nevidalir and get one specially made yeah. but to your point that one can actually manipulate each one yeah. whereas that's literally just you have to put them on they only work all together that's it well, but also, it still activated is- them with the snap that was the weird thing true I was also confused because uh, when he stole the stones, I didn't know how he did it. And yeah. somebody commented explaining that it's nanotechnology. Yeah. So oh, yeah. So he was so it, like, yeah, it moved it over from yeah, Thanos' yeah, thing, yeah. which that I, was so good. Oh my god, that was so good when he turns it around. It's like nothing, clink, clink. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, my, you know what I actually was really upset about? We'll I'll wrap this up right away. Mm-hmm. Um, I really grind my gears. Well, well no, I, I didn't like how they handled the um, the Avengers. The, when the music k- kicks in and the reason i didn't like it is because they lingered too like they didn't linger enough on the heroes and they didn't show the heroes running like that shot in the infinity war trailer yeah it didn't it last long there shot. and then it went and it, it finished the rest of that song uh, showing the villains running and i get that you're showing them running to yeah. each other but that song is a hero moment yeah. i don't like i don't want to see the villains in that section at all. Yeah. When we saw Thor come in with that song, he fucking came in and it was just Thor until we moved to Titan. So I felt that I personally would yeah, have... there's a quick shot on... The... I, I would have changed it. I would have swooped up and then swooped down and then yeah. have them look at it and then run and stay on them yeah. running to have that shot, at like your money shot kind of thing. That's what I would have done. To me, that was still beyond epic how it they was, all came back. The On your left, that Sam came about. Oh, like, and it was coming amazing. in so small because I didn't even know who it was. Like, uh, like he, he was on coming in slowly, slowly. Yeah, Sam? that was great. That was great. <laughs> I posted that scene today just because I knew people would get it and some people yeah. wouldn't get it. Yeah, yeah. And just the response is so funny. It's so, <laughs> and that's where the Russos cared so much. But like, you could just tell everything was paid off in this, yeah. even the stuff that they introduced. Um, but we'll leave the rest of it for the full, full spoiler breakdown. I know we talked yeah. a lot about it. Uh, actually, almost 40 minutes on this. As well, uh, a lot of Endgame stuff, uh, a lot of Game of Thrones stuff today. That's pretty much the crux of it. Um, and so, yeah, that's uh, where we're going to leave it. Um, guys, anything else? No. no. Uh, I apologize again if the sound is a bit off. I'm working with some newer technology, which should make it sound good, but I haven't played around with it too much. Make sure you're following Entertain Facts on Instagram and uh, the FR Podcast on Instagram. And uh, if you're enjoying this and you are listening from somewhere where you can rate it, give us a rating if you like what you hear. I'm G. It's your boy, Big Facts. I'm in a better mood now. Oh, look at that. It's V. (laughs) And we are out. I need to eat. I need to eat.